Now it's time for the Laredo Lemurs pregame show. Laredo Lemurs Baseball is brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashley's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, Trisco Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, Family Chevrolet, Gold's Gym, Guerra Communications, HEB, I Gadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony League, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Place, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, Tamu Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade 40, Whataburger of Alice. And now here's Bill Harrington with the Laredo Lemurs Free Game Show. All right, good evening, Lemurs fans. Bill Harrington along with Cameron Songer coming to you live from Unitrade Stadium as we get ready for the fourth and final game of this se series between the Laredo Lemurs and the Wichita Wingnuts. So far, the Wingnuts have won two out of three, but the Lemurs took an important game yesterday. They ended up winning last night by a final score of 5 nothing over the Wichita Wingnuts. For the Lemurs, it was five runs on ten hits. They made two errors in the game. And the Wingnuts did not pick up any runs on seven hits. They did not make an error in the ballgame last night. Luis Poyorena, he gets the win last night for the Lemurs. He went six and two-thirds, gave up five hits, no runs. He walked one batter and struck out five. John Brebria picked up his tenth save of the year, going two and a third innings, giving up two hits, walked a batter and struck out two. For the Wichita Wingnuts, Omar Van Cuomo ended up taking a loss. He pitched in six innings. Gave up eight hits, five runs, one walk, and he struck out six batters. So Ben Cuomo, even though he lost last night, he pitched pretty well for Wichita. He did have one bump on the road, and it all came in the third inning for the Wichita Wingnuts. But before we get to that, I wanted to mention a play in the top of the third inning that was really spectacular by the Laredo Lemur starting pitcher, Luis Poyorena. Luis Poyorena with two outs at the inning was facing off against Leo Vargas, and this is what happened. The pinch swung in and a liner right back of Pollo Reina. He reached out and snags it out of the air. An amazing catch there by Luis. And then he just drops the ball on the mound as he starts heading off. He is so cool. That was a great play. Wow. Luis Pollo Reina on top of it out there. Yeah, that was fun play to watch for Luis Pollo Reina. And he just dropped the ball as he left the field. Really cool play there for Luis. But the Lemurs ended up getting on the board, and maybe they carried off that momentum that Luis Poyorena gave them as they ended up scoring five runs in the third inning. And it started with Jared Medeiros with one out, reaching on a single. And then Ty Morrison would pop out to the shortstop to make the second out. So runner at first base and one down. Well, Jared Medeiros would go to second on a wild pitch, and then Devontae Richardson would step up to the plate and do this. The pitch to Richardson. A curveball swung on and lined in the left field line. It's going to be a fair ball. That will score Medeiros. He's going to come home. Richardson on his horse. He's going over to second base. He'll have a stand-up double, and the Lemurs pull ahead. one nothing. Yeah, so the Lemurs jumping out in front there. So Richardson would be at second base, and then Kevin Taylor would come up to the plate. He would earn a walk, and then Dennis Phipps would have an opportunity to do some damage. The kick and the throw home. Change up. Swung on. Hit in the air. Out to center field. This one might split the center fielder and the right fielder. And it's going to hit the ground. One runs in. Here comes Richardson. Following right behind is Kevin Taylor. He's going to score. And the Lemurs have a double and two runs in. Both Richardson and Taylor come in to score. And Dennis Phipps with a double and two RBIs. Nicely done there by Phipps. Yeah, Dennis Phipps picking up a big double there and two RBIs for the Laredo Lamers. So the Lamers had a 3-0 lead at the time. Dustin Geiger would follow up with a double of his own. He would drive in Dennis Phipps from second base, and then Juan Silverio would add to the party. No balls and one strike. Here's the pitch. Swung in and a fly ball. Hit well at the left field. Going back on the ball, Joe Ash Brodine. He's still going back. He looks up. It's off the top of the wall. Geiger's going to score, and going in with another double is Juan Silverio. That ball missed the home run mark by about a foot. It hit off the Armadillo home sign, and if it would have been a foot deeper, it would have went out of the ballpark. So Dustin Geiger comes in to score. It's 5-0 Laredo, and Juan Silverio with a double of his own. Yeah, so in the inning, the Lemurs end up picking up four doubles and a single. Jared Medeiros picked up the single, and the guys 
you know, do a nice job batting around there in that inning. They end up sending nine lemurs up to the plate in the third inning. They scored those five runs. That would be all they would need. And good thing they got them all right there because they did not score a run for the rest of the night against the Wichita Wingnuts. In fact, the Wingnuts ended up getting shut out and the lemurs uh, went quiet after the uh, third inning, but a nice job there by the Laredo Lemurs to pick up the victory last night. And manager Pete Incavelli was able to sit down and talk about it after last night's ball game. Coach, 5-0 win tonight. Uh, what are your initial thoughts? Well, Luis, big game. Polarina came through again. I mean, he's been great for us when, you know, most of the time, most of his wins is when that's coming off a game or a couple game loss, and he comes out there and those strikes and you know sets the tone for us and uh, you know we swung the bats and got some two out hits and played a pretty clean game didn't make too many mistakes other than the fly ball to left field uh, I think in the seventh but uh, good game this is the kind of game you got to play against these guys. Uh, speaking of that third inning it seems like it was all happening at once and all those two out hits how did it look from your point of view that it seemed like they just kept happening? Well, I mean, uh, you know, hitting, not hitting is contagious and hitting is contagious. Uh, I think everybody starts to feed off each other, and it's good to see them swing the bats with some people in scoring position, and, and they're going to do that. I mean, uh, you know, the one thing that we have to do, though, is, you know, we have to play good defense. We have to run the base as well. Those are the things you can control, and it's the little things that win your ball games. And, um, you know, we're going to score lots of runs sometimes, and sometimes we're not. But uh, defense and Getting the signs and and running the bases, the little things are the ones that's going to help you win those two to one ball game. Uh, for them, they have been Cuomo starting. It's the first time he's been back here since he was with the team. Uh, how how did you think your team did against him? Well, I thought we did pretty well. I mean, uh, you know, Ben Cuomo's a really good pitcher, and um, you know, he, he really only had one bad inning, and uh, you know, but you know, the last two games we lost, we, we only had one bad inning. So, I mean, that's that, that's the kind of games that you, we're going to play against Wichita. Is that team that uh, make the team that capitalizes on mistakes is going to win? Just like you said last night, you know, we talked about this last night. You said Portman comes in, stops the bleeding. He, he did just that. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been great for us, man, all year. I mean, he is. You know, and, and they're big wins. You know, they're, they're games where you know we're we're coming off a loss most of the time. It's just he's really answered the bell for us and really picked us up in the rotation when we really needed it. Uh, brought in Brevia pretty early in the game, earlier than we're used to seeing him, and then he stayed in longer than usual. Can you just talk us about talk to us about that decision? Hey man, sometimes it saves in the seventh inning and not the ninth. So I felt like with the bases loaded, with a five nothing lead, if they're going if they're going to get back back in the game, they're going to have to beat our best and. Um, you know, uh, Brebs has, you know, you know, been coming in and pitching one inning mostly and throwing 10 or 12 pitches. And, you know, I just felt like, you know, with the two-day break coming up, uh, you know, the importance of the game that, uh, you know, if they were going to get back in that game, they're going to have to beat our best. So um, I was very happy. Brebs threw really well and looked like he got better the longer he was in there and found his rhythm and his timing and threw very well. You talk a little bit more about that two-day break. Is there any plans for the team? Is it just a straight day off? And what is that going to do for uh, the team's momentum? Well, I mean, uh, you know, we're 61 games into this deal now, and um, um, I think the break's going to be good. You know, we'll take the full day off on t uh, on uh, Monday, um, and we'll work out on Tuesday and then leave for Joplin. All right, one more game against Wichita. Uh, who you have going tomorrow, and how do you feel about the one more chance, one more chance to get uh, even with the wind that's this series? Well, uh, you know, Holly's going. You know, he's been one of our big time pitchers too. He's pitched really well for us, and uh, you know, he's been a consistent starter for us. So, you know, I expect him to go out and do what Holly does: is keep us in the game, and and uh, you know, us play good defense behind him, and hopefully, we can have some timely hitting and win a ball game. That's Lemur's manager, Pete Ingevillia. We're going to take a quick timeout, but on the other side, today Cameron Songer was able to sit down with the Lemur's shortstop, Jared Madero. So we're going to have that interview coming up next. You're listening to Laredo Lemur's Baseball. Sweating through another barn burner at your team's bar? Sure am. Wish you had some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in meeting new people. Epic fist bumps, epic forearm bumps, epic or chest bumps, touchdown dancing, break dancing, line dancing, dancing like nobody's watching, awesome refreshment, refreshment for the win, and one-of-a-kind Rocky Mountain cold refreshment. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <sighs> when cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost-brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility.
Falcon Bank and the Laredo Lemurs are a winning combination. At Falcon, they know what counts. Personalized service, attention to detail, and genuine commitment to helping customers achieve their dreams. Falcon Bank, guided by faith, grounded by family, and committed to you. Need a little spark in your life? Then come on out to Unitrade Stadium for Friday Night Fireworks. Tickets start as low as $5, and you'll get to see great baseball and great fireworks all in one night. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS or go online at LaredoLemurs.com. I'll see you at the ballpark. Hey, Lemurs fans, every Thursday night at Unitrade Stadium is a Thirsty Thursday. Come on out and enjoy cold Miller Lite draft beers for only $1. That's right, beer for a buck. You can get tickets online at LaredoLemurs.com or by phone at 956-7-LEMURS. I'll see you at the ballpark. Back here on the Laredo Lemurs pregame show, Cameron Songer here with Lemurs infielder Jared Medeiros. Jared, you're about 30 games in your professional baseball career. Tell us the story of how you got here, your baseball journey. Well, it all started. Uh, I started at the University of Miami going in there. Um, then I transferred into a junior college in Gainesville, Florida, and then I just uh, recently graduated from St. John's University. And uh, from there, uh, my coach, Coach Hampton, got a hold of um, a Diamondback scout who talked to Pete and got me in here. Uh, earlier this year, you were a college senior playing for St. John's. Uh, what's the transition been like? What's been the hardest part of that transition from the college game to the American Association? Um, just right now is me getting back into the box and feeling comfortable again. But uh, yeah, I just had like a month off or actually like three weeks and just getting back into the box and getting my swing back. That's the main thing. Uh, Obviously, the pitching's probably a little bit better, uh, but in terms of playing de uh, defensively, you played mostly short here for the Lemurs. Is that where you played in college as well? Yeah, my whole life I've always been a shortstop. So. What do you like about playing shortstop? Just er everything, the angle of the field, where you have to throw. I know it's a one of the longest throws, but just I like, I like covering all the ground that I can, so big space to cover. Uh, so there are a lot of veterans on the lemurs team a lot of guys who've been in the league in this league and affiliated ball what have you learned from some of the older guys some of the vets on this club um just they've uh like juan silverio dennis phipps and um nieves when he was here like they all told me about like different approaches at the plate the way you play the game and stuff like that i've always played hustle hard and stuff like that so some of the guys might make fun i always run as hard as i can everywhere but other than that, just like uh, they're trying to help me with my approach at the plate and my swing and stuff like that, but they, they've helped me a lot since I've been here. Is anybody in particular giving you really good advice that's made a big impact on your game as a young pro? Um, from since I was young, definitely my father. You know, my dad, both my parents, my mom too. They've always they've done everything they can for me. You know, growing up and helping me get where I am today. Now, as a rookie in this league, you know you, you're used to seeing or hearing about. Uh, pitchers getting haze. I know from uh, from the broadcast uh, booth, you sometimes see the pitchers. They have the pink backpacks. Have you gotten any of that uh, rookie treatment here with the lemurs? Uh, luckily, no, I haven't. So hopefully, it stays that way. <laughs> are, are you, is it that, is it really the case? You're just not putting your teammates under the bus. No, it's actually the case. I'm pretty happy so far. Nothing's been too bad. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put you on the spot one more time here for the last question. What's your favorite memory of your entire baseball career? Tell us a story. Um has to be from when I started, from where I grew up playing in Hialeah, Florida. Just my dad, we, we would always go practicing back home every single day and stuff like that. So just always going back to the same field and stuff like that. It's a great feeling when I get to go back home now. I get to practice with my dad. He even built a batting cage at my house for me and stuff like that. So definitely has to do with that. All right, thanks, Jared. Good luck tonight and best of luck the rest of the season. That's Jared Medeiros, the Lemurs infielder. I'm Cameron Songer. The Lemurs pregame show will be right back. Right now, when you sign up for a Gold's Gym membership, you'll get tons of extras completely free. Confidence, free. Compliments from your coworkers, free. And the desire to wear tiny bathing suits, you guessed it, free. You'll be stronger with extras, and you'll be stronger with Gold's Gym. Know your own strength. Tiny bathing suit not included. Pro Mega Signs of Laredo is there for all of your printing and signage needs. We can be found at 1615 Jackman Road in Laredo, or you can reach us by phone at 956-723-2110. Again, that's 956-723-2110. If you need a sign, big or small, come to Pro Mega Signs of Laredo, where your print job is just around the corner. Laredo Lemurs Baseball is on the air, brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashley's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, Trisco Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, 
Family Chevrolet, Gold's Gym, Canada Communications, HEB, High Gadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony League, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Flakes, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, Tamu Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade 40, Water River of Alice. And now here's Bill Harrington with all your Laredo Lemurs play-by-play action. All right, Lemurs fans, welcome to Unitrade Stadium. Bill Harrington and Cameron Song are here for you. And we're going to go ahead and get to the starting lineups as Greg Hawley's out there warming up on the hill right now for the Laredo Lemurs. It's going to be Jace Ray leading off. He's playing out in center field. David Espinoza will bat second and play first base. Starling Rodriguez is in right field. He'll bat third. Joe Ash Brodeen will bat in the fourth spot. He'll play left field. Matt Pageant is the DH tonight. He'll bat in the five hole. Harrison Kane working as the third baseman. He'll bat sixth. Luis Hernandez is going to play shortstop and bat seventh. Brent Dean will do the catching and bat eighth. And Leo Vargas, he's going to bat in the nine spot. He'll play second base tonight for the Wichita Wingnuts. The Wingnuts wearing their camouflage tops tonight. They have red numbers and letters and white outline. They have gray pants on. The Lemurs wearing their gold tops with black numbers and letters and white outline. They have gray caps on to the Lemurs. They're gray and black. So a barrage of colors out there on the field right now for both teams. And we're just about ready to go. Greg Holly waiting for, I think a ball got loose down the left field line. And now we're ready to go. As Jace Ray. Yeah, still a little bit of time being called here. Looks like a couple of gates are open down the left field line. So they're going to have to close those up before we get started. So one of them is shut down. But Holly's going to go ahead and pitch. And it is in there for a strike. We are underway. Your game time tonight is 6.04. And your game time temperature is a nice cool 107. The 0 1 pitch, swung in a fly ball, hit well into center field, drifting back Morrison. He'll square up. He looks up into the sunshine and he'll go ahead and make the catch. So a long fly out by Jace Rays, the first out of the ball game, and David Espinoza will be coming up next. Yeah, I hope I didn't slip that by you too quickly. A nice, cool 107 degrees today. It is blazing here in Laredo, Texas. A very, very hot day. And what day of all days do we decide to do team pictures out in the sun? this day the hottest day of the year so far <laughs> very nicely done so we got all the team pictures in the players were out there the front office staff was out there everybody joined in for team pictures in the hotness it was great david espinoza into the batter's box and the first pitch to espinoza is in there for a strike so yeah 107 right now so the high temperature today was about 109 in laredo texas and it currently feels like it's 100 out, 109 outside with the, with the humidity. So a very hot one. A lot of the fans here that are at the ballpark are up and underneath the concourse right now trying to grab some shade. But Holly and the rest of the boys out there on the field in the sunshine. The 0-1. That's a strike on the inside part of the plate, a fastball. So no score, just underway. An early start here in Laredo on a Sunday. A 6-0-4 tilt for us. And Holly gets the sign. He'll throw again on the 0-2. And that one is called strike three. Ring up David Espinoza. He goes down looking. A fastball in the inside corner. And two outs quickly. Well, you'll probably see both of the pitchers try to work quickly in this one. And John Link and Greg Holly both work quickly normally anyway. But I'm sure they'll try to work maybe just a hair quicker than they are used to. Because of the heat out there. They want to get the heck back into the dugout. Here's Rodriguez. And the pitch to Starling Rodriguez is a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. So the wind's blowing out to left field. We're going to see it blow anywhere from 5 to 10 miles an hour tonight. And the 0-1 pitch is swung on and missed. Another change up there. So quickly, no balls and two strikes to Starling Rodriguez. Holly will get the sign with the high late kick. He brings it home, and that one misses outside. A change up. Lots of change ups being thrown there from Greg Holly. One ball and two strikes. He'll throw again. And that is a fastball, barely misses. Holly thought he had strike three. He took a couple of ste steps towards the dugout, but the umpire did not give it to him. So we'll go and get, get you the umpire's name here real quick. 
The 2-2 two -two pitch, swung in a soft liner to Jared Medeiros. He dives and it's by him and into center field for a base hit. Well, good effort there by Medeiros. But a base hit nonetheless for Starling Rodriguez. So no score, two outs, and the next batter is going to be the number four hitter, Joe Ash Brodeen. So here's your umpires for today's game. Tim Creamer behind the plate, Cody Lowe at first base, and Marty Bauer over at third. The 107 degree temperature, just going back into my memory banks here, I don't have it down as a, an official game time temperature, but I believe it's the hottest game time temperature we've ever had to start a game. I believe the highest before this was 105. Here's the pitch to the new batter, Joe Ash Brodeen. Instead, a toss over to first base, and Rodriguez goes diving back in head first. Well, they did a nice job of wetting down the field before the ball game today, and they want to get it nice and damp because that heat's just going to go ahead and bake it solid if they don't. Holly out of the stretch. He kicks and fires. That is high and tight to Joe Ash Brodeen. One ball and no strikes to Joe Ash. He's batting 284 on the year. He has three home runs and 24 RBIs for the Wichita Wingnuts. Today, the Lemurs open the game. They currently sit four games back behind Wichita. They're in third place. And the 1-0 pitch, a long hold by Holly. Now he'll throw, and that one swung in and grounded foul up the first baseline. Yeah, Wichita's in first place at 37-24. and 24. Then you have the Joplin Blasters sitting between the Lemurs and the Wingnuts. Joplin's at 32-26 and 26 on the year. They're three and a half games out. And then the Lemurs have a 33-28 and 28 record. You got Amarillo and Grand Prairie wrapping it up after that. One ball and one strike. Two outs in the inning. Holly out of the stretch. Looking in, gets the sign. Then he turns his shoulders and looks over to first base. A toss over to first. Rodriguez had a little lean going towards second base, but he gets back in safely. One ball and one strike. Brodeen waves the bat over the plate. He's batting from the left side of the batter's box. He's a switch hitter. Another toss to first, and once again, Rodriguez back in safely. Well, Starling Rodriguez is 5'10", 185 pounds. He only has one stolen base in 16 games so far with the Wichita Club. He's got a lean going right now towards second. And a toss over to first, and they get him this time. Ring it up. Geiger wants to throw the ball around the horn just for uh, good measure, but that's the third and final out. So Holly working diligently over there, trying to get Rodriguez out, and he finally does so. That time, Rodriguez got, went out to his furthest lead that he had of all of those leads that he picked up, and he did not get back in time that time. So he went out just a little bit too far, and that time, Holly got him with his good move. We're going to head to the bottom of the first. Denny, no score in the game. You're listening to Laredo Lemur's Baseball. Sweating through another barn burner at your team's bar? Sure am. Wish you had some ice cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in meeting new people. Epic fist bumps, epic forearm bumps, epic or chest bumps, touchdown dancing, break dancing, line dancing, dancing like nobody's watching, awesome refreshment, refreshment for the win, and one of a kind Rocky Mountain cold refreshment. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <laughs> When cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost-brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Falcon Bank and the Laredo Lemurs are a winning combination. At Falcon, they know what counts. Personalized service, attention to detail, and genuine commitment to helping customers achieve their dreams. Falcon Bank, guided by faith, grounded by family, and committed to you. Need a little spark in your life? Then come on out to Unitrade Stadium for Friday Night Fireworks. Tickets start as low as $5, and you'll get to see great baseball and great fireworks all in one night. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS or go online at LaredoLemurs.com. I'll see you at the ballpark. Hey, Lemurs fans, every Thursday night at Unitrade Stadium is a thirsty Thursday. Come on out and enjoy cold Miller Lite draft beers for only $1. That's right, beer for a buck. You can get tickets online at LaredoLemurs.com or by phone at 956-7-LEMURS. I'll see you at the ballpark. All right, let's go ahead and get you the Lemurs lineup. Leading things off will be Ty Morrison. He's playing out in center. Devontae Richardson's playing left field and batting second. Kevin Taylor will bat third and play second base. Dennis Phipps is in right field, batting fourth. Dustin Geiger at first base. He'll bat in the five hole. Juan Silverio playing third base and batting sixth. Brian Peterson doing the catching. He'll bat seventh. Jay Woody Valdez is the DH. He'll bat in the eighth spot. 
And Jared Madero is working as the shortstop, batting ninth tonight. No score as we go to the bottom of the first inning. John Link up on the hill for Wichita. A right-handed pitcher. He winds and throws, and that one is just a little bit away. John Link has been stellar since rejoining the Wichita Wingnuts. He has put up a 4-0 record in a minuscule 1.19 ERA. The 1-0 swung on and fouled back. In fact, his first start back from affiliated ball was against the Laredo Lemurs up in Wichita. And he went five innings against the Lemurs and did not allow a run on one hit. He struck out three batters. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. And bunt shown, bunted out up the third baseline, charging the ball is Harrison Kane. Kane will throw over to first base, and it's not going to be in time. So a base hit for Ty Morrison to start off the ball game in the bottom half. So a base hit. And here comes Devontre Richardson to the plate. Richardson looking down at the third base coach as he gets ready to step into the batter's box. Devontre Richardson currently on a seven-game hitting streak. He's 12 for his last 30. Ty Morrison has a solid lead over there at first base. Here's the pitch. Richardson takes low and outside on a fastball. Ty Morrison on the season with six stolen bases for the Lemur since joining the club. Ty Morrison playing in his 19th game for Laredo tonight. The Lemurs overall playing in their 62nd game of the year. More uh, Richardson swings and fouls the ball off. One ball and one strike. Vontre Richardson overall on the season batting 355. He's playing in his 50, 53rd game of the year for Laredo. He's had a couple of injuries that have kept him out of games. He's got a solid batting average. Here's the 1-1. Swung on a fly ball. Hit into right field. Rodriguez breaking back. He's got this one under control. He'll lunge at it at the last moment there and make the catch. And there's one down. And Kevin Taylor coming up to the plate. Yeah, Devontre Richardson currently second in the league with a 355 batting average. So he's very high up there. Here comes Kevin Taylor to the plate now for the Laredo Lemurs. Taylor, the left-handed batter, going to go ahead and dig in. He's all the way in the very back of the box. Taylor this year at home batting 262 overall, though he's got a 303 batting average. Here's the pitch to Taylor, and it's a fastball inside. So Link, when he's been missing, he's just been barely missing. In fact, it looks like the catcher and the, and the pitcher are looking for that strike that he's missing with. So it's a pretty close pitch. One ball and no strikes. The pitch. That's a strike on the outside corner. That was a fastball. So the defense goes like this for Wichita. They have Brodine in left, Ray in center, Rodriguez over in right field. Harrison Kane's at third. Hernandez is at short. Vargas playing second and Espinosa at first base. Behind the plate tonight is Brent Dean, his first start of the series. The 1-1. Morrison goes. The pitch is low. The throw down to second base is... Actually going to go into center field. Trying to lay down the tag was Hernandez. Hernandez had the ball in his mitt, but when he laid down the tag, I think it hit Morrison on the top of the helmet, and the ball bounced out of the mitt of Hernandez and went into left field, or excuse me, center field. So Ty Morrison, safe on his seventh stolen base of the year, and Kevin Taylor sitting up there with a 2-1 count and one down. So he's got an RBI opportunity now with a runner in scoring position. Here's the pitch from Link. That is low and away. Well, it would be very important to strike here against John Link. John Link has only given up one run in each of his last three games. So he gave up a run in each of those games, I should say, if that makes a little bit more sense. Three balls and one strike. And the pitch. Change up on the outside corner for a strike. Three balls and two strikes now to Kevin Taylor. Taylor on the year with 25 RBIs. So a big opportunity here for Taylor to help the Lemurs jump out in front. Lemurs got on the board first yesterday, but they ended up scoring five runs in one inning. The 3-2, change up, swung on, grounded, dribbled up to the second baseman, charging Vargas. Vargas will flip with the mid over to first base, and they'll get the out there. Nicely done by Leo Vargas, the second baseman. Really, if he would have tried to go to the hand, he probably would have been a little bit too late to get Kevin Taylor over at first. Ty Morrison goes up to third base on the play. 
And a nice four to three put out for Leo Vargas over to first base to flip it to David Espinoza. So that'll make two outs and Dennis Phipps is gonna be the batter. No score in the game, bottom of one. Full tilt of games today in the American Association. Everybody in the league will have two days off starting tomorrow. Here's Phipps. John Link working out of the stretch. And the pitch. That is in there for a strike. Phipps saw a change up. So Dennis starting the day batting 349 for the Lemurs. Currently third in the American Association. He's also third in the league in hits with 80. And the 0-1 pitch swung on and fouled away. And that gets back up into the screen. No balls and two strikes to Phipps. So Phipps has got to be up there protecting now. He's got an 0-2 count. And John Link can be crafty up there at the plate. Dennis Phipps, born in the Dominican Republic, started his minor league career as an undrafted free agent with the Cincinnati Reds back in 2006. Here's the 0-2. Swung on and fouled away. A little lofter up into the stands, and that almost gets the grounds crew. The, ground, the groundskeepers here at Unitrade Stadium are employees of the city of Laredo. The ballpark is actually owned by the city. The team is owned by a private owner. No balls and two strikes, so they come together. One person puts the team on the field. The other builds a stadium, and voila, baseball in Laredo. No balls and two strikes. And the pitch. That is low. A check swing. They'll check down with the first base umpire. He said it did not go around. There was a baseball team here, a professional baseball team, the Laredo Broncos. And they played at another ball field. This ballpark was not built yet. I believe it was called Veterans Field. I never was able to go over there. I don't even know if it's still there or not. Here's the one two. Swung in and a ground ball over to the left side. Harrison Kane will back up on it. He'll tip off, he'll hit off the tip of his mitt. And Phipps is going to be safe at first, and that's going to bring in Ty Morrison. Dennis Phipps safe at first. And it's one nothing. Laredo. Harrison Kane breaking over to his left and had it tip off of his mitt. He had to lunge a little bit for it, though. So coming up to the plate is Dustin Geiger. The Lemurs jump up to a 1-0 lead. So here's Geiger into the batter's box. So we'll see if Dennis Phipps tries to break for second. Two down in the inning. Here's the pitch. That is in there for a strike, a fastball to start it off to Geiger. John Link holds the baseball behind his back as he looks in to get the sign. And the 0-1 pitch, swung on and missed. A big hack there by Geiger. He saw one at his letters, and he said, man, this thing looks like a cheeseburger. I'm going after it. And he swung right through it, unfortunately. So no balls and two strikes to Dustin Geiger. Not that Dustin likes cheeseburgers. I, I don't know. I've never talked to him about cheeseburgers. The O2. That one misses away. I think everybody likes a cheeseburger, though, right? Can't, can't go wrong with a cheeseburger. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Dennis Phipps with a pretty good lead over there at first base. And Link sets high. He'll throw home. And that one swung on a ground ball over to Harrison Kane at third. Kane will field this one. He throws a little bit low, but Espinosa's on the bag. He'll grab the ball, and that'll do it for Dustin Geiger and the Laredo Lemurs. But they strike here in the bottom of the first inning. One run on two hits. There were no errors and one left. We're going to go to the top of the second inning. Lemurs won. Wichita nothing. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Unitrade continues to provide solutions in foreign trade through a highly satisfactory customs brokerage service. Unitrade has quality trained personnel devoted to the highest level of customer service. For all your transportation, distribution, and consolidation needs, it's Unitrade. Chavarria's Plumbing's the number one choice for any plumbing problem. Chavarria's is a full service company with up to date technology trained professionals. With over 30 years of service to the community, Chavarria's is still growing strong. Visit chavarriasplumbing.com. 
lemurs.com and go lemurs core business solutions is a proud sponsor of lemurs baseball core business solutions services the 17 southernmost counties of texas as well as areas of northern mexico they offer a wide range of high-tech solutions for businesses and organizations make core business solutions your solution today for all of your vehicle collision repair and paint needs there's only one place to turn mike's paint place mike's paint place has computerized color matching and digital imaging they also do full frame and suspension repairs stop by and see Mike's Paint Place today at 6410 Polaris Drive in Laredo. Hey fans, every Monday night at Unitrade Stadium is Margarita Monday. Come on out to the ballpark and cool off with an ice cold margarita for only $2. But please do not drink them too fast. You might get a brain freeze. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS. Check us out at LaredoLemurs.com. Tokyo Garden of Laredo is located at 2515 East Del Mar Boulevard and they serve the best sushi in town. Stop by Tokyo Garden for a quick lunch or a fancy dinner. Either way, you're going to enjoy our fine cuisine. Did you just get off work? Then come on by and check out our happy hour specials. Tokyo Garden, where you'll find the best sushi in Laredo. All right, Wichita coming up to the plate. Joe Ash Brodeen is going to get up to the plate again. He was up at the plate when Starling Rodriguez tried to st steal second base. Or actually, he was picked off from first, so he really wasn't running on the play. Greg Holly was just able to pick him off. He had a little bit of a lean going, though. one nothing Laredo as we go to the top of the second. Here's the pitch to Joe Ash. He swings at the first one, hits a slow ground ball. That's going to go ahead and creep into right field, and that'll be a base hit. So he sees one pitch and gets a base hit out of it. And that'll bring up the former lemur for a short time, Matt Pageant. Pageant, a left-handed batter, so he'll walk behind the home plate umpire and the catcher, Brian Peterson. Get back behind... The left-handed batter's box, do a little groundwork, and get ready to go. So the Lemurs put up that run. Ty Morrison reached on a single. He stole second base, ended up on third on a ground out, then came home with a Dennis Phipps infield base hit. Two hits for each club so far. Greg Holly looks over his shoulder, checks on the runner. And now he'll throw home. That is a fastball on the outside part of the plate. So Wichita is actually going to go home after this game. Then they're going to go over and play teams in the Can-Am League. So an interesting trip for them. Right now is the time for the Wichita Wingnuts as the pitch is being thrown. And that one's inside for a ball that they have some guests in their home ballpark. The National Baseball Congress World Series is being played right now. So that means the Wichita Wingnuts have to vacate their home. So they go on a super long road trip this time of year every year and a toss over to first base and the runner back in safely Joe Ash Brodeen so not only are the Wichita Wingnuts going to play against the Laredo Lemurs this is their first part of the road trip right here is to get this is the one that helps them get started they're going to go over and start playing teams in the Can-Am League next the 1-1 one -one pitch no instead of throw over to first base so starting on July 29th, I believe it is. The Wichita Wingnuts will be back east. And the pitch, high and tight. In fact, they're going to go to New Jersey first. So they'll play a 6.05 game on the East Coast in New Jersey on a Wednesday to start off against the Can-Am League. And they'll take that trip into August and play some more games. They're going to play Ottawa as well. So they'll go up to Canada. And the next pitch is swung on and felled up over our head. It hits on top of the roof here and bangs around a little bit. As yeah, so they're going to play the Ottawa Champions in Ottawa. And then they'll, I believe, finish things off with Quebec. Yeah, Wichita and Quebec. And then they'll come back home. And their ballpark should be freed up to play in again. The Lemurs still have to make a trip up there. Runner at first base and nobody out. Toss over to first base and Joe Ash Brodeen is back in safely. See, when do the Lemurs go back up to Wichita? I know we make a trip to Sioux Falls and then we come back to Wichita on the way back. Yeah, on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of August. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. That is outside. A fastball away. And now it's going to make it a three-ball, two-strike count. So the National Baseball Congress, in case you don't know, it's a playoff system. 
And the runner goes from first. The pitch is swung on and fouled off. So Joash Brodine will have to retreat back to first base. It's amateur baseball players, most of them collegiate players. That you know they're still in college, but they join these collegiate teams and they basically make all-star teams and go and play in the National Baseball Congress. And there have been some big names that have played there over the years. Just walk around the ballpark in Wichita and you can see some of the guys' names all over the ballpark. The 3 2, the runner goes again. The pitch is low. The throw down to second base is not needed. It was ball four to Matt Pageant. So Harrison Kane will be the next batter. So Greg Holly gives up a base hit and then walks Matt Pageant, which is kind of odd. Holly does not walk very many batters at all. That pitch that he missed with right there was pretty close. But the Lemurs do not get the call. Greg Holly on the year now with 13 walks given up, and he's thrown in 83 plus innings. One nothing Lemurs and Harrison Kane going to go ahead and step into the box with runners at first and second base. Here's the pitch. He shows bunt, pulls back, and watches it miss outside. And so some of the names that have played over in the National Baseball Congress and have played in that ballpark in Wichita, Bob Euchre has been there. So that's one that stands out. Barry Bonds, Pete Gavilla, Rafael Palmero. Our very own Pete Gavilla, yeah. Then you got Roger Clemens has played in that ballpark. Here's the 1-0. High for a ball. Joe Gary Giola. Now Brian Peterson's going to go out and talk things over with Holly as he missed with another pitch there after he gets done walking. Matt Pageant. One of my favorites, Eric Davis, suited up in Wichita. Kurt Gibson, another hard nosed baseball player. And Buck O'Neill played in the National Baseball Congress way back when he got started. Mark Grace is also playing in that ballpark. And Don Larson. So just a few names for you that have played in Wichita and played in the National Baseball Congress. Some of those names maybe not have played in the National Baseball Congress, but they actually stepped on the field there in Wichita. Two balls and no strikes. Runners at first and second base. And Harrison Kane awaiting his next pitch. Holly throws. Swung on a fly ball. Hit well in the air into left field. On the run is Devontae Richardson. He'll get into foul territory. He leans over into the bullpen and it's just out of his range. He might even got a tip of the mid on it. But the ball falls down to the ground and Harrison Kane will get another chance to hit. Two balls and one strike. The Lemurs would love a double play ball right now. They would probably give a lic licorice stick for a double play ball. They got plenty of them down in the, in the dugout. They bring down the licorice sticks. They have them in the clubhouse as well. Two balls and one strike. Maybe they trade a bag of seeds for a double play here. The pitch. Swung on a ground ball. There's a double play ball. Silverio tags the bag at third. Throws the second for two. The throw over the third base. It's a triple play. Are you kidding me? Wow. Well, you ask for a double play. You throw in a couple of licorice sticks and you get a triple play out of it. Amazing. Silverio touched the bag at third, threw to second, and then Taylor throws over to first base. It was close at first, but it was a triple play. Holy cow. Tweet that out, my friends. You'll very rarely see one of those. Wow. We're going to go to the... Where, where are we going? We're going to the bottom of the second inning. one nothing lemurs. Right now, when you sign up for a Gold's Gym membership, you'll get tons of extras completely free. Confidence, free. Compliments from your coworkers, free. And the desire to wear tiny bathing suits, you guessed it, free. You'll be stronger with extras, and you'll be stronger with Gold's Gym. Know your own strength. Tiny bathing suit not included. Pro Mega Signs of Laredo is there for all of your printing and signage needs. We can be found at 1615 Jackman Road in Laredo, or you can reach us by phone at 956-723-2110. Again, that's 956-723-2110. If you need a sign, big or small, come to Pro Mega Signs of Laredo, where your print job is just around the corner. Breakfast speaks for itself here at Whataburger. It's going to be hot. It's going to be fresh. 
It's almost like when you're a kid and you wake up in the morning, you can smell mom cooking breakfast. I like their hash browns. My favorite is the honey butter chicken biscuit. I like the taquitos. We have some fresh cracked eggs here. I like these pancakes because they're fluffy. <laughs> I really like the fact that you can get into Whataburger real fast and bring it on the go. We're cooking breakfast for you at Whataburger. In over 40 years, nobody's helped more families achieve the American dream of home ownership than Armadillo. In fact, Armadillo Homes has built more homes than all other builders combined. And there are reasons for this. Integrity, responsibility, service, and of course, quality. So if you're thinking about making the greatest investment in your life, think of the one builder who's dedicated its entire life to helping the Laredo family. Think Armadillo Homes, armadillohomes.com. Go lemurs. Absolutely amazing. Juan Silverio starts the triple play for the Laredo Lemurs, and now he gets to come up to the plate. It's one nothing Laredo. Wow. Cameron and I did some quick math between innings. The Lemurs have played 361 games all told, and Silverio gets into the first pitch, hits it deep out to left field. It's going to go over the fence. A home run for Juan Silverio. Are you kidding me right now? The energy transferred from the field into the dugout, and Silverio brings it up to the plate with him, and he hits a home run on the first pitch he sees in this at bat tonight. 2 nothing, Laredo. Holy mackerel. That'll bring up Brian Peterson. Could this be a turning point for the Laredo Lemurs in this season? Looking into the future, maybe so. We'll have to mark this one down on our calendars. Two nothing lemurs. So as I was saying before Juan Silverio so politely hit a home run. Here's the pitch to Peterson. He'll take one a little bit high and in. The lemurs have played 361 games before turning their first triple play. Those are regular season games. And here comes the 1-0 pitch. On the outside corner for a strike. So the double play, by the way, it ended up going 5-4-3. And you saw it developing as soon as the ball was hit. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Swung it in a ground ball over to the right side. That'll hug the ground and get through for a base hit. So Peterson strokes one the other way. And Jayudi Valdez will be the next batter. Yeah, the ball that was hit took Silverio right over to the bag at third. He just had to take one step to touch the bag. And then he threw very accurately over to second to get the out there. And then Taylor with the relay over to first base. And they got Harrison Kane literally by a half a step. They showed it on the replay. Kane was still in the air when the ball got into the glove of Geiger. So a close play over at first base. But what a dandy there for the Laredo Lemurs. That'll be one for the record books. Here's J.U.D. Valdez. He'll take inside and low. So J.U.D. Valdez seeing some action here tonight for the Lemurs, working as the designated hitter. A runner at first base and nobody out. And the Lemurs have already seen a home run by Juan Silverio here in this half inning. For Silverio, by the way, that was his seventh home run. I have not mentioned that yet. And the pitch to Jayuti. He hits a hard ground ball. Over to the shortstop, Hernandez. Hernandez flips to Vargas. Vargas over to first base. It's in the dirt, but digging it out is Espinoza. And that's a double play against the Lemurs. So two outs quickly here on the traditional 6-4-3 double play. And Jared Medeiros coming up to the plate. Jared Medeiros was on the pregame show today. We sat down with Jared. Actually, Cameron Songer was able to sit down with him and talk a little bit about what brings him here to Laredo and some other things his time at St. John's and you know some of his fond memories of playing baseball it's two nothing lemurs here's the pitch to Medeiros he swings at the first one and pops it out and that'll get back and up and over the ballpark so no balls on one strike to Jared Medeiros I don't know about you Cameron but I'm still buzzing off of that triple play I don't think I've ever seen one I mean the old one pitch, swung in a fly ball, hit into right field, moving back Rodriguez. He's got this one under control. He camps out there, reaches up over his head and makes the catch, and that's going to do it for the Laredo Lemurs. We're going to go to the top of the third inning. The Lemurs are up 2-0. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball.
Since Accenting Technologies opened for business in 1998, they have worked to establish solid relationships with their clients. They are set to maintain the highest standards of service and integrity and to perform work of only the highest quality, achieving client satisfaction on every project. They have attained these goals through a tradition of care and professional pride. They serve a wide range of corporations and small business franchises. Accenting Technologies has the tools and expertise for any technical need that your business may have. Call us here in Laredo at 725-2654. That's 725-2654 for Ascending Technologies. Todos sabemos que podemos lograr más cuando estamos listos. Por eso, decidí matricularme en Texas A&M International University. Quiero un título universitario y las oportunidades que me brindará. Tammy Yu me ha recibido a mí y a 7,000 estudiantes de todo el mundo. Tammy Yu me impulsa a ser grande, enciende mi mente y hace mi corazón latir. Imagina las posibilidades cuando eres impulsado por Tammy. Inscríbete ahora para verano y otoño. Visita tamiyu.edu y sé impulsado. Capital Care EMS, located at 1510 Kaila Norte Suite Number 11, invites you to experience a new standard in medical transportation. Servicing Laredo and all surrounding areas, Capital Care EMS provides transports to wound care treatments, HBO treatments, dialysis treatments, doctor's appointments, radiation treatments, chemotherapy treatments, and many more. From emergency medical transport to x-rays and lab work, our state-certified EMTs and paramedics are readily available 24 hours a day when you need them most. Capital Care EMS accepts most major medical insurances, including Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, and many more. Capital Care EMS is locally owned and operated. Call now for your free consultation. 956-712-8911. All right, Luis Fernandez into the batter's box. It's 2 nothing lemurs, and here's the pitch from Holly. I want to strike on the inside corner, a breaking ball from Greg Holly. Two runs on four hits for Laredo, no errors. No runs on two hits for the Wichita Wingnuts. The Lemurs shut out the Wingnuts yesterday. And the 0-1 swung on and popped up. That'll get back into the stands. So it's Luis Hernandez, Brent Dean, and Leo Vargas coming up to the plate. Luis Hernandez batting 249 on the season. Holly with a new baseball. Greg Holly, 3-5 and five on the season with a 1.85 ERA. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Change up away. So no balls and two strikes. Holly's pitching in his 14th game of the season. And to start the day, he has started, uh, picked up 82 and two-third innings. The next pitch is in the dirt. Holly made his last start against Joplin, the Blasters. The Lemurs went on to win the game 1-0, but Holly did not get a decision in the ball game. As the Lemurs had a, a walk-off win in that one, John Brebry ended up getting the victory. But he went eight innings without allowing a run on four hits. The pitch swung in a ground ball over to the right side. Backing up on the play is Taylor, and that'll get through. And that's going to be an error on Taylor. Coming up to the plate, here is Brent Dean. Brent Dean batting 283 as he steps into the batter's box. He's looking down at the third base coach and seeing if there's any signs on. So Luis Hernandez is on the base pass. And here's the pitch from Holly. Misses outside, a fastball to get things started to Brent Dean, Brent Dean, he got to play a little bit on the game on the 23rd, but he didn't come up to the plate at all. He just came in to catch. Other than that, the Lemurs have not seen him. Last time they did see him was back on July 9th when the Lemurs were up there in Wichita. Here's the 1-0. Fastball misses inside. Yeah, so Holly made that start against Joplin without allowing any runs. He did, uh, did it again back on July 5th against Grand Prairie. Unfortunately, that game, the Lemurs ended up taking a loss. The game went to the bottom of the 10th inning. We were up in Grand Prairie, and Grand Prairie had a walk-off win. And that was a one nothing final as well. So the run support over those two games, not very high for Greg Holley. Of course, if he was able to get a couple of runs on that game against Joplin, he would have been able to get the win. Here's the pitch. Swung in a ground ball over to the left side. Charging the ball so very, he'll turn. Throw over to first base. It's high, and it goes into the Lemurs' dugout. 
And that almost took out somebody down there. <laughs> Hopefully everybody is okay. But that's going to be an error on Silverio. Silverio was ranging towards the bag at second, actually. He, he's the third baseman, and he cut all the way in front of the Maderos. Maderos really didn't have a big play on it. He would have had to charge quite a bit to get to it. So Silverio's so allowed to take anything he can get to, and he took that one right there and did a 360 spin and threw it into the dugout. So everyone's going to move up. It's going to be the second error of the inning. And now Luis Hernandez is at third, and Brent Dean's over at second base. Two nothing lemurs. Leo Vargas, the batter, with an open bag at first. Vargas will swing, hit a chopper over to Maderos on two hops. Coming in to score from third base is Hernandez. The out is going to be made at first. So Leo Vargas with a ground out. And a 6-3 to three put out in your scorebook. And that's the first out of the inning. Hanging tight is Brent Dean at second base. So it's now a 2-1 to one ball game. And that's going to be an unearned run. Here's Jace Ray. Jace Ray batting from the left side. He's the leadoff man for the Wichita Wing Nuts. A runner at second base. And the pitch from Holly. That's a changeup in there for a strike. No balls and one strike. And remember, Holly pitched nine innings against Amarillo on July 10th. He gave up three runs, but only two were earned that day. The Lemurs took a loss that day. They went down 3 nothing. As Bunt shown there, and that one's pulled back, and it's a 1-1 count now. So Holly's really just hasn't got a whole lot of run support from the Lamers. The 1-1 pitch. That's a changeup swung and missed. One ball and two strikes. 2-1 two Laredo, two runs on four hits for the Lamers. One run on two hits for the Wichita Wingnuts. Holly will look back at second base with the high leg kick. He brings it home, and that one is inside a fastball. Holly will bring a fastball that works as a sinker. He also throws a splitter and a slider. He's got a changeup mixed in there as well. Two balls and two strikes. Now he's going to step off the back of the rubber and reset everything. Currently, when Holly makes his start today, he's currently second in the league in ERA with a 1.85 mark. He's fifth in the league in innings pitched. So now a little game of cat and mouse going on between the pitcher and the in the batter. Jace Ray will step in. Holly will step off. Ray will step out. Holly will step off. So who's going to flinch here next? Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled away off to the left and up into the parking lot. And Greg Holly at home this year, he has put up a record of one win and four losses and a 1.42 ERA. So a very nice ERA here. But like I said, just lack of run support for Holly here in this ballpark. He has started seven games at home. This is his eighth. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Swung in a ground ball over to the right side. Backhanding Geiger. Geiger will flip over to Holly. Holly will get to first base before the runner, Jace Ray. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. Brent Dean heads up to second base on the play. So two down and it. David Espinoza will be the next batter. Well, if you weren't with us in the second inning, the Lemurs turned to triple play. A 5-4-3 triple play. Runners at first and second base. So Vario Field did the ball, touched the mag at third, flipped it to second. Taylor threw it over to first. And they had a triple play, their first in their history. So here's David Espinoza with a runner at third base and two down. The pitch. Swung on and missed. No balls and one strike to Espinoza. Espinoza in his first at bat. He struck out looking. The Lemurs, by the way, are seven and six when Holly starts a game. So that means without his decisions working into the game one way or another, they have seven wins and six losses. The 0-1. Oh, and that one hits him right on the leg. Ouch. That one might have caught him right on top of the knee. The ball ends up bouncing off, and it goes about six feet away from David Espinoza as he crumbles to the ground, and Brian Peterson's there to try to help him out. Now the trainer for the Wichita Wingnuts is coming out to see if he could help out as well. 
the athletic trainer is Tyler Lowe. So Espinosa is going to try to walk that one off. And that's going to bring up the number three hitter, Starling Rodriguez. Hooper down there, he's the manager for Wichita. He led his club last year to 73 wins. And an American, American Association Championship. So here's Starling Rodriguez after the batter is hit. So I gave you that, that record for Holly when he starts games. The Lemurs are 7-6 and six when Holly starts a game. But get this one. The team is 7-2 and two in Holly's last nine starts. So you look back at his first four games. The Lemurs lost all four of those games. And he was pitching all right. You know, he ended up, ended up giving up 10 runs. Well, he didn't give up 10. He gave up three runs in one game. but the Fargo Moorhead Red, Red Hawks ended up scoring 10. But three runs is not a big amount. He gave up two runs against St. Paul. St. Paul won two to one. Here's the first pitch to Starling Rodriguez. That's in there for a strike, a fastball on the outside part of the plate. Against Graham Perry back on May 27th, he gave up one run. Graham Perry came back and ended up winning the game three to two. And the 0-1 pitch outside for a ball. And then you go all the way back to May 21st against Amarillo. And he ended up giving up six runs in that game, but a lot of it was due to errors. There was only one earned run. Here's the pitch to Rodriguez. He hits a ground ball at the third baseline. It's going to be a foul ball. So make it one ball and two strikes. Lemurs up two to one. Runners at the corners for the Wichita Wing Nuts. We're in the top of the third inning. Got the Oregon music playing. I like the Oregon music. It's a nice little addition here. The one-two pitch swung in and a ground ball up the middle. Taylor's there. He'll flip to Medeiros. The Lemurs will get the final out of the inning. What well, one run does come in to score for Wichita. They get one run on no hits. There were two errors and two left. We're going to go to the bottom of the third inning. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. The Lemurs are up two to one. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to fewer guys with beer bellies, which led to more women attracted to those guys, which led to dates, second dates, wedding bells, and honeymoons, which led to hubbada hubbada, boom, which led to you. Miller Lights, we invented light beer, and you, you're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hey, ¿tienes algo que celebrar? ¿Que le salió el primer diente a tu hijo? ¿Que tu abuelita aprendió a tuitear? ¿Que cambiaste tu cheque? La respuesta es la misma. Pues un carne sazo. No importa lo que estés celebrando, lo que importa es que lo celebres. Pues con un carne sazo de HEB. En HEB encuentras gran variedad de cortes a precios bajos y de buena calidad. Carne sazo. Carne asada con ganas. Solo en HEB. This summer, Allegiant will increase to four weekly flights to Las Vegas, Nevada. If gambling in Vegas isn't your thing, Allegiant is also increasing to two weekly flights to Orlando. Enjoy the Disney theme parks, Legoland, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, and the Kennedy Space Center. Flying comfort from your Laredo International Airport. Visit Allegiant.com for details and specials. Before your Memorial Day party gets going, drive over to Ashley Furniture Home Store this week for our best Memorial Day sale ever. Get dramatic price reduction store-wide or no interest until January 2021. Choose from sofas and sectionals all at unbelievably low prices. Plus, find savings on beds and amazing deals on dining rooms. It's our best Memorial Day sale ever, so don't wait. Hurry over to Ashley Furniture Home Store right now. Ashley Furniture Home Store. This is home. 4520 San Bernardo Avenue, Laredo, Texas, 956-712-2401. Subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See store for details. Yes. South Texas families never strike out with Driscoll Health Plan. Catch the value-added services we pitch to our Medicaid members. Enjoy a free membership to specific boys and girls clubs. Receive gift cards for completing Texas health care checkups. Restrictions and limitations may apply. Visit us at DriscollHealthPlan.com. 
three, two, one. Number one. That's Laredo's number one Chevy dealer. Family Chevrolet turns the best day ever into the best month ever. 15% off. Not good enough, but 25% off. Now that makes it the best month ever. With over 600 vehicles available, makes it the best pricing ever. 2015 Equinox. 2015 Traverse. Not 15, but 25% off. And the best financing rates for the best month ever. 1.9 interest. Family Chevrolet of Laredo.com. Come see why the deals are always better at Family Chevrolet. All right, Ty Morrison to lead it off for the Laredo Lemurs. And a change here for the Wichita Wingnuts, kind of a surprise. Scott Kuzminski coming in to pitch for John Link. So Link's night is done. Here's the pitch to Ty Morrison. He'll foul, foul it away. You have no idea why John, John Link is out of the ball game, but he is out of the game. The Lemurs have scored two runs against him here tonight, and that's the most amount of runs he's given up over his last four games. Here's a soft liner on one hop into the outfield. And that'll be a base hit for Ty Morrison, his second hit of the game. And Devontre Richardson coming up to the plate. Well, the Laredo Lemurs trying to tie up this series right now. They have an opportunity to, to do that tonight. Wichita won the first two games of the series. The Laredo Lemurs shut down the wing nuts yesterday behind Luis Poyorena in a strong third inning when the Lemurs scored five runs. And tonight the Lemurs are up 2-0 and Greg Hawley on the mound. Ty Morrison out to his lead at first. Here's Richardson, the pinch. A breaking ball showed, showing bunt is Richardson. He bunted at the ball, but they'll check down with the first base umpire, and he says he did not go around. That's an odd turn of events. So it's 2-1, to one, Laredo. Kevin Taylor is on deck for the Laredo Lemur. So here's the numbers on Scott Kuzminski. We saw him pitch earlier in the series on the 23rd. He has a 2-2 two two record and a 4.43 ERA. And the pitch. Fastball. That's in there for a strike. Scott Kuzminski, six foot two, 195 pounds. He went to the University of Hawaii. Aloha, Scott Kuzminski. One ball and one strike. Now he'll step off the back of the rubber and want to get things going again. This is his first professional season with the Wing Nuts. He was signed by the Wing Nuts back on October 31st of 2014. And he played his college baseball in Hawaii. How lovely. Here's the 1-1 pitch. A couple of head nods first, and then he's going to step off the back of the rubber. So no pitch at all. Just thinking about Hawaii makes me smell the dewy air. Makes me feel that lovely humidity and all the flowers that you get to sniff around when you're in the in the Hawaiian Isles. Here's the one one pitch. The runner goes, the pitch is swung on and fouled back. So Ty Morrison got a pretty good jump, but Richardson swings and fouls the ball off. One ball and two strikes. Lemur's up by a run. I think one of my favorite parts about going to Hawaii is getting those little chocolates that they have with the macadamia nuts in them. Those are ultra delicious. They're really good. And if you ever go to the island of Kauai, they have great places for food, of course. Everyone knows there's great food in Hawaii as the one-two pitch is low. But if you ever go to the island of Kauai, get the puka dog. The puka dog is really good. If you don't know what a puka dog is, it's kind of like a regular hot dog. But instead of a regular hot dog bun, they take a regular bun that's actually full and they poke a hole right in the middle. As the toss goes over to first base and diving back in head first is Ty Morrison. So they poke a hole in the middle of this, I guess, long piece of bread. It's about six to eight inches long. And then they stuff it with a bunch of goodies. And then you have a hot dog in there as well. Toss over to first base again and Morrison dives back in head first. It's called the Puka Dog, and it is so good. I don't need a whole lot of hot dogs, but when I go to Kauai, I will have a Puka Dog. You could have, like, mango sauce go in there and pineapple sauce, but for some reason you think, well, there's the sweet and then the salty. It doesn't sound that good. Well, it is delicious. The 2-2 pitch grounded over to the third baseman, Kane. He'll bobble just a little bit, then he'll flip to second for one, back over to first base. It's a double play. Second double play to turn tonight by the Wichita Wing Nuts. They turned one in the last half inning. So that'll take everybody off of the base pass. So that's the 5-4-3 variety. 
Of course, you can have the regular stuff on your puka dog as well. You can have the regular old mustard and ketchup if you like. I personally will never put ketchup on a hot dog. I don't know how people do that. But some people like ketchup on a hot dog. Here's the pitch to Kevin Taylor. He'll swing and ground it off the leg of Scott Kuzminski. He'll recover. He'll fire over to first base. It's going to be in time to get out Kevin Taylor. And that's going to do it for the Lemurs. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. We're going to the top of the fourth inning. It's 2-1 to one, Laredo. Aloha. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Catholic College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Kaplan College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Kaplan College does not guarantee employment or career advancement. Information about programs at www.kaplancollege.com slash consumer dash info. Today at Whataburger, we're cooking the Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. The chicken is hot and fresh. It's got melted Monterey Jack cheese topped with lettuce, tomato, bacon, and then the honey mustard adds a nice sweet flavor to it. All the flavors come together just perfect. I mean, not only do I want to eat it, but I keep wanting to look at it. The crunchiness of the bacon adds a really nice texture. Honey mustard and chicken just go together. You know, sweet and savory, it's a perfect mix. Try the new Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. Only at Whataburger for a limited time. Welcome back to Unitrade Stadium in Laredo. Cameron Songer here with you for the middle three innings as the Lemurs and Wichita Wingnuts wrap up a four-game set. The Wingnuts won the first two games of the series. Laredo won last night, and the Lemurs currently in third place and looking up at the division-leading Wichita Wingnuts, hoping for a series split. It's 2-1 to one Lemurs right now. Greg Holly, the Lemurs' opening day starter, the right-handed hurler, winds and throws, and we're underway. First pitch fastball misses low and inside. It's ball one to Joash Brodine, who's one for one with a single in this game. Shadows creeping over the infield as Holly fires again. And this one catches the inside corner to make the count one and one. It's a toasty one here in Laredo tonight. It's 105 degrees right now, and with a little bit of humidity, it feels like 107. This one swung on, hit down the third baseline, and out of play foul. Usually, here in Laredo, we'll start... Most games at 7.30 p.m. Central Time, but on Sundays, due to visiting team travel, it's a 6 p.m. start. So this one swung on, grounded on a couple hops to first base. Geiger can't handle it. It gets away from him, and he can't make the throw. It stayed on the infield grass. And I think they're going to rule that an error on Dustin Geiger. That one just kind of hopped up and bounced off what looked like his sh shoulder, maybe... A little bit of his shoulder. He got most mostly leather on that ball. It took a kind of a mean hop, but then the fact that he wasn't able to corral it, the official scorekeeper going to rule that an error. It tends to favor the lemur starter, Greg Hawley, as the one run Wichita has in this game came last inning, and it was unearned. It's the third error of the ball game now on the lemurs. So Matt Padgett will dig into the left-handed batter's box. The runner on first is Brodine. Holly will look to work out of this jam. Here's the pitch. Fastball swung on, laced into right field. Chasing it down is Phipps in right field. Rounding second and heading for third is Brodine. The throw comes into third, and the tag is a little bit late. Silverio at third base dropped the ball anyway. So Padgett with the single and the aggressive base running by Brodine. He'll take third base. Runners on the corners here for the wing nuts, and no outs in the top of the fourth inning. In a 2-1 to one ball game, the wing nuts... We'll be looking to tie and then potentially take the lead here against Lemur starter Greg Holly. The run support came with one in the first and one in the second for the Lemur. So they small balled their run in the first and Juan Silverio hit a leadoff home run in the second inning. At that point, it was two to nothing Lemurs. The Lemurs ended the top of the second inning by turning a triple play. The first in franchise history and more than 350 franchise regular season games. But since then, it's been all wing nuts. Holly will come set at the belt. He'll work from the stretch with runners on the corners. And here's the pitch to Harrison Kane. It misses low and inside to the right-handed hitter. Kane is a former lemur. Spent the last two seasons with the 
club in Laredo. He had 256 last year in 87 games. He's with his second team in the 2015 season. After starting with Sioux Falls, here's the 1 0. This is Lowen inside. So 2 0 the count to Harrison Kane out of Thousand Oaks, California. He played his college ball at Pepperdine University in Malibu. He was undrafted in 2011 after wrapping up his college career. Played with the Amarillo Sox in 2011 and also again in 2012. And then the two seasons with the Lemurs in 2013 and 2014. Here's the 2 0 pitch out in front as Kane was chasing an off speed pitch. So Kane is in his fifth season in the American Association. Greg Holly in his first season in the AA and Holly's first season with the Lemur. So these two were never teammates, but both familiar with Unitrade Stadium. Here's the 2 1 pitch swung on and tapped into the plate. That's a foul ball. So it bounced off the shin, it looked like, of Harrison Kane. So the count now 2-2, two and two. no outs, runners on the corners, top of the fourth inning. Wichita trailing the Lemurs 2-1. to one. Lemurs shut out Wichita last night 5 to nothing. After the first two games of the series went to Wichita 9-1 to one and 2 to nothing. Here's the pitch, swung on, hit in the air towards shallow center field. That's going to drop. We have a tie ball game, rounding second and trying to take third. And this is not going to be a contest. Paget is in there standing up on third base. It's an RBI single for Harrison Kane. Just like that, we've got a brand new baseball game. It's 2-2. Two to two. Harrison Kane just drove in his eighth run as a Wichita wingnut and his 18th overall. He had 10 ribbies in 38 games with the Sioux Falls Canaries. And that'll draw a quick mound visit from Lemur's pitching coach, Mike Meyer. Wichita's already seen... Their starting pitcher, John Link, get chased from the game after just two innings. He gave up two runs in those two innings, and then Wichita brought in a relief pitcher, Scott Kuzminski, and he shut out the Lemurs in one inning of work so far. It's a hot one out there. Greg Holly is from Texas. He played his college ball at Texas Christian University and calls Fort Worth, Texas home. So he's used to Texas heat, but there's Texas heat, and then there's Laredo, Texas heat. And this is a hot day by Laredo standards. First pitch temperature at 6 p.m. was 107 degrees, and it really hasn't cooled off all that much about an hour into the game. Mound visit is over, and digging into the left-handed batter's box is Luis Hernandez. Grodin scored on that last play. Paget went from first to third. Harrison Kane is now on first base. We're tied up at two. Wichita has two runs on four hits and no errors. Laredo, two runs on five hits, but three errors. And a breaking ball misses low and outside to Hernandez to start off his at-bat. He scored the first run of the night for the Wingnuts after leading off the third inning by reaching on an error, and he came around to score. So the Wingnuts have scored the last two runs in the game as we are tied up at two. Here's the 1-0 offering. Swung on, hit back up the middle. That's down into center field. That'll score the run from third. Paget trots on home. Three straight hits and two runs in this inning for the Wingnuts. They take the 3-2 lead. Manager Pete Incavilia has seen enough. He will head onto the field, point to the bullpen, and the day is done for Greg Holly. Infield comes in, and we will get a mound visit here, but the umpires will probably cut this one short. We'll have to see who the new Lemurs relief pitcher is, but first we will take a break. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. The Wingnuts lead this one now 3-2. to two. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to people wondering, L-I-T-E, that's how you spell light? Which led to people thumbing through their dictionaries. Which led to, there's got to be a better way to look up words. Which led to the invention of spell check. Which led to better resumes, promotions, celebrations, and happy hour. Miller Light, we invented light beer and happy hour. You're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Crowd at the bar making you sweat? Uh-huh. Could you use some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in epic nights, maximum refreshment, great times, awesome memories, high fives, smiles, Rocky Mountain refreshment, Blue Mountain refreshment, quadruple epic refreshment, killer parties, and totally refreshed killer parties. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <laughs> When cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. 
Texas Inflatable Rentals has Laredo's largest water slides. We are proud to say that we serve the greater Laredo area and supply slip sliding fun for kids of all ages. Texas Inflatable Rentals has a huge selection of inflatables for every budget. And to add to the party, we rent tables, chairs, snow cone machines, popcorn machines, and cotton candy machines that will help take your party to the next level. We also have moonwalks and bounce houses. Contact Texas Inflatable Rentals at 956-436-3909 or at TexasInflatableRentals.com and book with the coupon code LEMERS for a 10% discount. That's Texas Inflatable Rentals, Laredo's largest water slide. Driscoll Health Plan loads the bases with value. We knock it out of the park with all the value-added services we bring to our Medicaid members. Driscoll families cheer on the Grand Slam packages, sports physicals, free memberships to boys and girls clubs, and dental care for pregnant women over 21. Take a swing at our baby showers offered by Cadena de Madre. Forget those peanuts and cracker jacks, root for our baby blankets and more. Come slide into home when you receive gift cards for completing Texas Health Steps checkups and attending postpartum visits on time. Don't miss a play. Restrictions and limits may apply. Visit DriscollHealthPlan.com. New pitcher for the Laredo Lemurs is number 25, Ryan Beckman. He's making his 30th appearance out of the bullpen for Laredo. He has a 2-0 record and a 1.60 ERA. He struck out 29 and walked 5 and allowed 24 hits in 39 and a third innings pitched. Also has one save to his credit so far this season. Means the day is done for Greg Holly. The Lemurs starter went three plus innings, allowed three runs, only one of which so far is earned. Six hits allowed, one strikeout, one walk. Lemurs committed three errors defensively behind him, but he is responsible for these runners on first and second. Brent Dean will dig into the right-handed batter's box to hit as the Wingnuts have a three to two lead right now. The righty Beckman will come and try to put out the fire. So Beckman will come set at the belt. He's in the shadow, more than half of the infield in the shadow as well. Showing bunt, pulling back, taking a called strike is Brent Dean. Dean hitting 283 on the season. This is his second season with the Wichita Wingnuts. He played in just 21 games last year. This is his 42nd appearance with Wichita this year. He's a good hitter on the road, hitting 346 away from Wichita. Beckman comes set. As the corner of the infield in, anticipating a bunt, a long hold. And here's the pitch, showing bunt, laying it down the third baseline. It's a slow roller. Silverio scoops, throws to first, and covering first base is the second baseman, Taylor. That put out goes 5-4, to four, and the runners both advance on the sack bunt. So advancing to third is Kane, and Hernandez up to second. One out, and the double play no longer in the pocket of the Laredo Lemurs. We saw them turn a triple play earlier in this game. That was in the second inning, a 5-4-3 triple play with runners on first and second. Now the Lemurs infield comes in. So the Lemurs have turned a triple play. The Wingnuts defensively have turned two double plays. If you're a fan of good infielding, this is the game for you. One out, runners on second and third. Here's the pitch. Fastball in there for a called strike on Leo Vargas. Vargas, the number nine hitter. Knocked in a run last inning on a 6-3 ground out. He's hitting just 196 coming into tonight's game. This is his 22nd appearance with Wichita on the season. Righty-righty matchup. It's Ryan Beckman on the mound trying to work his way out of this jam. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Misses low. Vargas is in his first season of professional baseball. He played one season at Frank Phillips College and then transferred, finished out his college career at Nichols State University, where he was a starter for two years. As a senior in 2014, nearly hit 300, hit 299 with 24 runs batted in. Here's the 1-1 offering, swung on and missed. He was on top of a pitch. The bottom just really dropped out of that. Ryan Beckman would throw that sinker that also works as his fastball. He also will throw a slider and a changeup. Three good pitches for the Lemurs relief pitcher, Ryan Beckman, former 18th round pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates. That was back in 2009. One and two the count. Wichita trying to add to a three to two lead. Here's the pitch. 
Misses low and outside on the breaking ball. Beckman's made stops with the State College Spikes, West Virginia Power, Bradenton Marauders, and Altoona Curve. That's all in the Pirates organization. He also pitched in 2011 in the Australian Baseball League. Six overall seasons for Beckman in the Pirates organization. Here's the pitch. Mrs. Lowen inside. Gets away. Runner coming home. Beckman covering the toss as he slides home and the ball will get away. Beckman dropped the toss as Peterson tried to cover. And the throw was in time, but sliding home safely is Harrison Kane. He scores. It's the third run of the inning for the Wingnuts. It's now 4-2 to two, Wichita. That's a tough one to swallow for Greg Holly. As he's sitting there in the dugout, watching his teammate try to work out of the mess that he created. Watching that run come home. No one drives home that run. And the count now full to Leo Vargas. Up to third is Hernandez. And the Lemurs just can't seem to get out of their own way. Three errors and that run scoring on a wild pitch. Here's the 3-2 pitch to Vargas. Swung on, tapped foul down the third base line and into the Wingnuts dugout. That might have actually scooted over the Wingnuts dugout and into the crowd. Hard to tell from our angle up here on the third base line. Shout out to the fans who actually made the trip here to Unitrade Stadium tonight. It is a hot one. And not too much of a breeze to speak of that would cool the fans off. It feels like it's up over 105 is the real field temperature here in Laredo. Payoff pitch to Vargas. This is outside, and he earns the walk. So he will head over to first base. Lineup will turn over here for the Wingnuts. And what is turning into a long inning, Jace Ray will be the seventh batter to come to the plate in this inning. Just one out on the board, but with the runners on the corners, the Lemurs could potentially turn two and get out of this nightmare of an inning. Jace Ray to the plate. He's over two so far tonight. The former Washington Husky will dig into the left-handed batter's box. He's hitting 285 versus right-handed pitching, 371 versus lefties. Unfortunately for him, Ryan Beckman is a righty. Pickoff throw goes over to first. Diving back in safely is Vargas. So Ray was 1 for 4 yesterday, 0 for 3 two nights ago. After a stellar debut in this series, he went two for five and also walked once. Runner goes from first. The throw will go down to second. It's in time. It's on a line. The tag is applied. And Leo Vargas is caught stealing for the second out of the inning. A great throw there by Brian Peterson. So that was the first stolen base attempt of the game by Wichita. And it didn't really go according to plan. Take another look on the replay if you're watching on the stream. Just right on. Throw is a little bit off towards the second base side, but applying the tag is the second baseman, Kevin Taylor. Now there's two outs. The runner on third. This one swung on. Grounded to Taylor at second base. He keeps the glove low, gets the ball, throws over to first in time. And the Lemurs avoid bringing in that fourth run of the inning. Wichita does score three in the inning. They take a 4-2 to two lead as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Three, two, one, number one. That's Laredo's number one Chevy dealer. Family Chevrolet turns the best day ever into the best month ever. 15% off, not good enough, but 25% off, now that makes it the best month ever. With over 600 vehicles available, makes it the best pricing ever. 2015 Equinox, 2015 Traverse, not 15, but 25% off. And the best financing rates for the best month ever, 1.9 interest. Family Chevrolet of Laredo.com. Come see why the deals are always better at Family Chevrolet. Family Chevrolet is the number one volume Chevy dealer for a reason. Every customer rides during our spring cleaning closeout sale with massive price cuts on 600 Chevys. New 2015 Chevy Cruze. How about 25% off MSRP? Wow, that's huge. Or only $199 a month. New 2015 Malibu for only $269 a month. Or 25% off MSRP. Plus two years free maintenance and a 100,000 mile warranty. It's a spring cleaning closeout sale happening now at the number one volume Chevy dealer. Come see why the deals are always better at Family Chevrolet. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Catholic College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, 
and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Kaplan College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Kaplan Call. Dennis Phipps will lead things off for the Lemurs in the bottom of the fourth inning, and they're playing from behind for the first time tonight after a three-run top of the fourth inning by the Wichita Wingnuts. The Lemurs trail 4-2. to two. Phipps digs in the right-handed batter's box, looks at a first-pitch breaking ball in there for a called strike. It's delivered by Scott Kuzminski. The second pitcher of the night for Wichita after John Link, the starter, was chased after just two innings. But Kuzminski pitched a very good third inning, inducing the Lemurs to go three up and three down. Did allow one hit, but then a subsequent double play erased that runner. So that breaking ball missed low. So the count even at one and one. Dennis Phipps, a league veteran, former major leaguer, looks at a fastball that misses low and inside. Phipps has eight games of major league experience. He's ahead in the count 2-1. and one. Scott Kuzminski is 23 years old. He's a rookie in the American Association this year. This is his first season of professional baseball. Here's the 2-1. Swung on and missed as he pulled the string on Phipps there. Off-speed pitch in the dirt. And Phipps chased it. This is Kuzminski's 16th appearance of the season. He started six games. Now they're using him more in a bullpen kind of role as he pitched two and a third innings. In the first game of this series against the Lemurs. As Phipps fouls this one off over the Lemurs dugout and out of play. So that was a 9-1 wing nuts victory. That was on Thursday night. As Kuzminski faced just eight batters to get his seven outs. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled off into the screen as Phipps stays alive. So the Lemurs didn't like Scott Kuzminski the first time they faced him. They just got one hit out of eight batters against him. Dennis Phipps getting another crack at him here. Phipps is one for one so far tonight. He has an RBI single. That was back in the first inning. And here's the 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball laced over the head of the third baseman into left field. That's going to get down. And Phipps rounding first. He'll be up to second base standing up. A leadoff double for Dennis Phipps. That's his 17th double of the season. He had 15 last year in 66 games. This is just his 62nd game, so he's already ahead of that pace. Last season with the Lemurs, Phipps hit 335. He came into tonight's game hitting 349. That average going up as he's now two for two. Dennis Phipps says you can put the Lemurs behind in a game, but if it's up to me, we're not going to stay down for long. Lemurs chasing two runs. It's four to two in the bottom of the fourth inning. As we thought... At the start of this game, this is going to be a fast-paced game. It's so hot out there on the field as the Wingnuts want to go home after this game. Breaking ball misses low and inside to Kevin Taylor. But instead, it's been the opposite. It's been a kind of drag them out game. Both teams saw their starting pitchers not make it through the fourth inning. We'll get a quick mound visit here from the catcher, Brent Dean. Just a quick word of encouragement to his hurler, Scott Kuzminski. He is dealing with a runner in scoring position. With no outs, Dustin Geiger at the plate. Right-handed pitcher Kuzminski facing the right-handed batter Geiger. Here's the pitch. It's tapped foul off of the catcher, Dean. And we'll get a new baseball. Geiger's a 268 hitter with the Lemurs. It's in his 27th game with Laredo. He started the season with the Wing Nuts, where he hit 351 in 33 games. But Geiger on a four-game hitting streak. 0 for 1 so far tonight, so trying to keep that stretch going. He was 1 for 4 last night. Breaking ball, swung on and missed as Geiger was out in front. He was fooled by that one. Kuzminski, as Bill mentioned last inning, played his college ball at the University of Hawaii. That was after spending two years at Bellevue Community College, where he led his team to a conference title in 2011. Breaking ball, swung on and missed, dropped third strike. And they will, I think, apply a tag. Geiger was running up the first baseline. He's a little bit confused. He'll head back to the dugout. 
Maybe that wasn't actually a dropped strike, and the catcher just felt like applying a tag for, you know, for giggles. So Geiger strikes out. It's the first strikeout of the game for Kuzminski. There's now one out. Phipps still stands on second base. It's the bottom of the fourth inning, and the Wingnuts lead the Lemurs 4-2. to Digging into the batter's box, Juan Silverio. He's already having himself a good game. One for one with a solo home run. That was in the second inning. He also started a Lemurs triple play that ended the top of the second inning. Swings and hits this first pitch foul over the Lemurs dugout out of the stadium to the right side. So that was the second pitch Juan Silverio has seen in this game from two different pitchers. He swung at the first pitch he saw against John Link in the second inning and hit a home run. And now the first pitch Kosminski delivers. Not quite the same result, a foul ball. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball, tapped foul down the third baseline. And this one gets into the Wingnuts dugout. Just like that, the count 0-2 to Juan Silverio. That home run was Silverio's seventh of the season. And coming into tonight's game, he had a 262 average in exactly 50 games with the Laredo Lemurs. 0-2 the count. Glancing over his shoulders, Kuzminski. And he'll come home with a pitch. It swung on, grounded foul in pretty much a similar spot. A very similar location on that pitch, a similar swing, and a similar result. A foul ball, and Juan Silverio still alive. This is his first stint in independent baseball after he played in 2008 through 2012 with the White Sox organization before getting picked up by the Cincinnati Reds. From the stretch, Kuzminski delivers. Swung on. This one goes towards second base. It's knocked down by a diving Vargas. He gathers, will fake a throw to first, and it's an infield single for Juan Silverio. Advancing to third on the hit is Dennis Phipps. Silverio's now two for two. He represents the tying run. He's on first base with one out. And here comes Brian Peterson. Following the Silverio single. Offenses are both active in this ball game. The last two nights we've seen two shutouts. One by the Lemurs, one by the Wingnuts. And we're certainly not seeing one here tonight. Although we do have a streak that is in danger of being broken. The Lemurs, if you go back to the 4th of July, if they've scored two or more runs in a game, they've won. That streak is in jeopardy here tonight as they trail 4-2 to two against the Wichita Wingnuts. Peterson digs into the right-handed batter's box. Runner goes from first. A great jump from Silverio. The throw is offline. It's going to get into center field. T trying to take third is Silverio. The run scores, and that throw gets away. It's into the Wingnuts dugout, and two runs will score on the play. So Brian Peterson will stand in the batter's box. He didn't have to even swing the bat, and now two runs have scored. Two errors on the play by the Wingnuts. The throwing error by the catcher on the steal attempt by Silverio at second base. And then as that one went into center field, they tried to get Silverio at third base. And the throw got away from the center fielder, Jace Ray. So two runs score. None, none of, neither of them are batted in. And Peterson swings, hits this one straight back up in the air, camping out under it is the catcher. He'll be called off by the third baseman, Kane, who charges in. He makes the catch and finishes his run in the right-handed batter's box. It's the second out of the inning. The bases are empty. But boy, the complexion of this game has completely shifted. What a sequence. Goes without saying that Phipps scored from, sec or scored from third on the throwing error. Runners were on the corners. The Lemurs knew they were in danger of being doubled off. So they tried to steal. The new batter is J.D. Valdez. He looks at a first pitch breaking ball in there for a called strike. Runners on the corners. Silverio tried to steal. He got a great jump. A bad throw by Dean into center field was going to allow Phipps to score. Silverio, against the wishes of third base coach Gibby Velacuayar, tried to take third. And a throwing error by the center fielder Jace Ray allowed him to come around and score. Another breaking ball. Another called strike on J.D. Valdez as we continue action here. Four to four in the bottom of the fourth inning. Two outs and the base is empty for the number eight hitter Valdez. And here's the pitch. It's in the dirt. It gets away and bounces up off the screen for ball one. Wow. We've seen a little bit of everything in this ball game tonight. The Lemurs turned a triple play. 
The Wing Nuts have turned two double plays. We've seen a solo home run, and we've seen now five errors between the two teams. And it's just the bottom of the fourth. Here's the one, two. Fastball misses low and inside. So we've seen some good, we've seen some bad, and we've seen some ugly. Silverio has scored, Phipps has scored, and Valdez is the batter. Kuzminski trying to shake it off and get out of the inning. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on, hit in the air, over the glove of a leaping Vargas at second base. He might have even gotten a piece of that as it gets into right center field for a two-out single. And this inning will continue. J.U.D. Valdez with his first hit of the night. He's now one for two. And that'll bring up the number nine hitter, Jared Medeiros. Medeiros is another rookie, another young guy who recently wrapped up his college career. Kuzminski is in his first season of professional baseball, but he was a senior in 2014. Took last summer off. Medeiros didn't get any time off. He's had about three weeks between the end of his college career with St. John's University and signing with the Lemurs in June. First pitch, fastball misses low. Well, Medeiros is the Lemurs shortstop. He's taken over that spot since Jimmy Mojica left the team. He's a very capable defensive glove. His bat's still coming along. He's hitting 198 on the season. The 22-year-old looks at the pitch. It's in the dirt, gets away, and the runner... Hung up between first and second, he'll return to first with no throw. You start to wonder if the errors are getting in the head of Brent Dean. He had one pitch get away from him in that last at bat, although that was a wild pitch. But the throwing error on the steal attempt, and any time that ball is loose, you got to wonder if it's getting in his head a little bit. Runner on first, two outs, and a 4-4 four to four ball game. Medeiros at the plate, here's the pitch, swung on, grounded, Pass the second baseman into right field. He will take his time getting up to first base as the right fielder Rodriguez charged it. He was thinking about throwing over to first, but I don't think anyone was covering. Back-to-back -back singles for the eight and nine hitters in the Lemurs batting order. That'll put a runner into scoring position as Ty Morrison will come to the plate. He's already two for two today. The action just continues to roll at Unitrade Stadium in Laredo. And now a mound visit from the Wichita pitching coach. That's Luke Robertson. He's in his eighth year with the club. He wears number 14. He takes a long walk to visit with Scott Kosminski. As we will take this time to glance down the third baseline, see if there's any action in the Wichita bullpen. And the answer to that is a resounding no. Some guys sitting there in some chairs and putting their feet up. So the Wingnuts are already on their second pitcher. Kosminski does have experience as a starter. So I think the plan was Link was struggling. They just brought in Kuzminski thinking he was going to go for a couple innings at the very least. He was going to go for a while and kind of take that long reliever role in this game. Mound visit is over as the home plate umpire, Tim Creamer, breaks it up. As Ty Morrison will dig into the left-handed batter's box. And so we've seen the momentum swing multiple times in this game. Is it about to happen again? Left-handed hitter Morrison. It's in his 19th game with the Lemurs. He came into the game with a 357 average. He's already two for two. Breaking ball. This is outside. The runner on first is Medeiros. The runner on second is Valdez. We're tied up at four in the bottom of the fourth inning. Lemurs have already scored two runs in this inning, and neither of them were knocked in. It was on a stolen base with a pair of errors. Fastball catches the outside corner. That evens up the count at one and one on Ty Morrison. So yeah, just a crazy inning so far. That was after the Wingnuts scored three in the top of this inning. Righty on the hill, lefty in the batter's box. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Breaking ball, it didn't break, it stays high. For ball two. Morrison last night was one for four. He was one for three the night before that. And 0 for four on the series opener against Wichita. So he had two hits in the first three games of the series, two hits tonight. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fastball stays low, and now the count three and one. There is a base open, but they would be talking about loading the bases with Devontre Richardson standing on deck. He is 0 for 2 today, but he certainly do. Richardson, one of the top five hitters in the league. You don't want to have the bases loaded with him up. Here's the 3-1. Fastball, it's laced into deep center field. Morrison got a lot of that baseball going back. It's off the wall and 
400 feet straight away center field. One run is in. The second run will come in. It's a stand-up double for Ty Morrison. The Lemurs take a 6-4 lead. This is a four-run inning for Laredo. Ty Morrison now 3-for-3. Three three, two singles. One run scored and two runs batted in with that swing of the bat. And that's the biggest hit of the night for either team. It's not the farthest we've seen any ball hit, as Juan Silverio did have a solo home run to lead off the second inning. Although, I don't know, that ball might have been hit farther. 400 feet to straightaway center. Silverio's homer, as this one swung on, popped foul down the first base line by Richardson. Silverio's homer in the second inning was hit to left field, where it's just 325 down the line. It was right over where the left fielder Brodeen plays but it didn't clear the wall by much. So if that ball had been hit to a different part of the stadium, we're talking about a three-run homer for Ty Morrison. Here's the pitch to Richardson. He swings, grounds this ball past the second baseman who went down to a slide, and then Rodriguez struggles to pick it up in right field, and coming in to score is Ty Morrison, just like that. It's seven to four, Lemurs. That's the fifth run of the inning for Laredo. Devon Trey Richardson with the single. I'm not sure if you can call that a fielding error. Another look at that on the stream. It's a single is Ty Morrison with the quick base running. Good heads up coaching there in the third base box by Giddy Villacuayar, who watched that ball and saw that Rodriguez didn't get a clean scoop of it in right field. He came up throwing and forgot something. So Kevin Taylor to the plate. A pickoff throw goes over to first. Richardson scampers back in. After his RBI single, this has turned into a fun one. 7-4, to four, Lemurs lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. Coming set at the belt is Kuzminski. Here's the pitch. Taylor takes for a ball. My goodness. Taylor is the eighth hit, or the ninth hitter of the inning now for the Lemurs. As the inning started with a Dennis Phipps double, he stands on deck. We can just keep on rolling. There are two outs. Fastball catches the outside corner. As Kosminski just hoping to get out of this inning. And get the bats another chance to work for Wichita. He saw two runs score on a play that had the Wichita wingnuts commit two errors on a stolen base attempt. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Swung on. Hit into left field. That's going to drop. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Richardson is rounding second, rounding third. They'll wave him home. He's hustling home. The play at the plate. He's in standing up. It's now 8-4, Lemurs. It's a double for Kevin Taylor as he hit that one down the left field line. And the Lemurs have batted around. They're going to keep on rolling. What an inning this has been for the Laredo Lemurs. Devontre Richardson scored from first base on that hit by Kevin Taylor. We'll get a mound visit from the manager Kevin Hooper and the day is done for Scott Kosminski as he just got battered here in this fourth inning. Five runs, two errors were committed. And he's still responsible for that runner on second. We'll get a new Wingnuts pitcher. We'll tell you more about him after this break. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. They lead 8-4 to four in the bottom of the fourth inning. Today at Whataburger, we're cooking the Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. The chicken is hot and fresh. It's got melted Monterey Jack cheese topped with lettuce, tomato, bacon, and then the honey mustard adds a nice sweet flavor to it. All the flavors come together just perfect. I mean, not only do I want to eat it, but I keep wanting to look at it. The crunchiness of the bacon adds a really nice texture. Honey mustard and chicken just go together. You know, sweet and savory, it's a perfect mix. Try the new Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. Only at Whataburger for a limited time. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to people wondering, L-I-T-E, that's how you spell light? Which led to people thumbing through their dictionaries. Which led to, there's got to be a better way to look up words. Which led to the invention of spell check. Which led to better resumes, promotions, celebrations, and happy hour. Miller Light, we invented light beer and happy hour. You're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
Crowd at the bar making you sweat? Uh-huh. Could you use some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in epic nights, maximum refreshment, great times, awesome memories, high fives, smiles, Rocky Mountain refreshment, Blue Mountain refreshment, quadruple epic refreshment, killer parties, and totally refreshed killer parties. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <sighs> when cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Texas Inflatable Rentals has Laredo's largest water slides. We are proud to say that we serve the greater Laredo area and supply slip sliding fun for kids of all ages. Texas Inflatable Rentals has a huge selection of inflatables for every budget. And to add to the party, we rent tables, chairs, snow cone machines, popcorn machines, and cotton candy machines that will help take your party to the next level. We also have move walks and bounce houses. Contact Texas Inflatable Rentals at 956-436-3909 or at texasinflatablerentals.com and book with the coupon code LEMERS for a 10% discount. That's Texas Inflatable Reynolds, Laredo's largest water slide. New pitcher for the Wichita Wingnuts is number 12, Alex Bo Shears. He's 24 years old, 6 foot 4, 210 pound righty out of the University of Tennessee, Martin. He's making his 13th appearance out of the bullpen. This will be the second time we see him in as many nights. He has a 1-1 one one record and a 0 0.98 ERA. He struck out 12, walked 5, and allowed 15 hits in 18 and a third innings pitched. He went two innings last night, allowed two hits, walked two, faced eight batters, and struck out one. The runner on second, Dennis Phipps at the plate for the second time this inning as the Lemurs lead 8-4. to four. Righty, righty matchup. Here's the pitch. A breaking ball. Swung on, hit foul. As Phipps hit it into the backstop. Five runs already across this inning for the Lemurs. They scored one in the first, one in the second. They saw Wichita score one in the third and three in the fourth to take a 4-2 to two lead. And then they responded in a big way. Six runs across this inning for the Lemurs, I should say. They lead 8-4. to four. Phipps is in the batter's box. Kevin Taylor is on second following his RBI double. That scored Devontae Richardson from first. Coming set at the belt, and here's the pitch to Phipps. It's in the dirt for ball one. What an inning this has been for the Lemurs. Six hits already, or seven hits already. And one strikeout, and one pop out. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed. And Phipps is down to his last strike as he chases a breaking ball that was low and inside. So Phipps is already two for two. He has an RBI single and led off this inning with a double. He later came around to score. Trying to keep this inning going. Coming set at the belt is Bo Shears. Here's the pitch. It gets away. It bounces off the plate and over the head of the catcher, Dean. Advancing to third is Taylor on the wild pitch. This has been just a nightmare of an inning for the Wichita Wingnuts. There's been wild pitches. There have been runners scored on errors that followed a play where the Lemurs were just trying to steal a base. Two errors officially on the board for the Wingnuts. Three for the Lemurs, but the Lemurs have the lead. Dennis Phipps at the plate. Two and two the count. A runner on third. Here's the pitch. Misses low. And the count now full to Dennis Phipps. Phipps is third in the league with a 349 average. It's 307 at home, but 402 on the road. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Bo Shears with a nasty breaking ball. And Phipps tosses his bat and batting helmet. He's not happy with that at bat, but the Lemurs have to be pretty happy with that inning. We are through four at Unitrade Stadium. The Lemurs just scored six runs in that inning, and they lead 8-4. Driscoll Health Plan loads the bases with value. We knock it out of the park with all the value-added services we bring to our Medicaid members. Driscoll families cheer on the Grand Slam packages, sports physicals, free memberships to boys and girls clubs, and dental care for pregnant women over 21. Take a swing at our baby showers offered by Cadena de Madre. Forget those peanuts and Cracker Jacks, root for our baby blankets and more. Come slide into home when you receive gift cards for completing Texas Health Steps checkups and attending postpartum visits on time. Don't miss a play. 
Restrictions and limits may apply. Visit DriscollHealthPlan.com. We'd like to imagine that if you're listening to this, it's on a radio in a backyard in between innings. The grass was mowed this morning, and the grill smells like heaven. And what do you know? Your friends just arrived with a 24-pack of Miller Lite, along with a few new friends to enjoy them with. Here's hoping we're right, and you're not just stuck in traffic. Here's hoping it's Miller time. Great beer, great responsibility. 2015 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Do you want to sit in a car for seven hours, risk a flat tire, traffic, or highway construction delays? Fly direct from Laredo International Airport to Dallas-Fort Worth on American Airlines. From Dallas, you can change planes and take a flight to Tokyo, London, or even Rio de Janeiro. With four daily arrivals and departures, American Airlines is sure to have a connection that works best for you. So avoid spending hours in the car or risk an accident on the highway or even a flat tire. Fly in comfort from Laredo International Airport. Visit AA.com for details and to book a reservation. Back here at Unitrade Stadium after an insane fourth inning. That score saw nine total runs scored, three by the Wingnuts, six by the Lemurs, two pitching changes, one for each team. And when the dust settled and we begin the four, uh, fifth inning here, the Lemurs have an 8-4 to four lead. The righty, Ryan Beckman on the hill for Laredo, and the left-handed hitter, David Espinosa, the 33-year-old, will dig in. So let's see if this game resumes some semblance of normalcy. It's been a wild one so far, so I wouldn't bet on it. Here's the pitch. Fastball in there for a called strike. Well, Lemurs have experienced some pretty high highs and some pretty low lows. They've turned a triple play and then turned, or turned around and hit a home run. That was in the second inning to take a 2 to nothing lead. This next pitch swung on, grounded down the first baseline. Geiger with the scoop, and then he'll take it himself and tag first base. One out here in the fifth. So the Lemurs scored the first two runs of this game. It felt like they had all the momentum. Wichita got one in the third and then three in the fourth to take a 4-2 to two lead. It felt like the Wingnuts had all the momentum in the game. And then what do the Lemurs do in the bottom of the fourth inning? Well, they just bat around and score six runs, you know, casually. So here we are in the top of the fifth inning. Starlin Rodriguez now at the plate. One out and the base is empty. Let's see if this is a regular baseball game once again. Fastball misses low and away from Beckman. As Rodriguez at the plate, he's one for two on the day, singled in the first inning, and then was picked off of first base. Righty righty matchup, and here's the pitch. Fastball catches the inside corner, and evening up the count at one and one. Rodriguez is from the Dominican Republic. He was undrafted, spent 2010 through 2015 in the Cardinals organization, including some time at the double A level. 120 career games at that level. And looks at a fastball there that misses inside. A career 241 hitter at the double A level. Played twice as many games at the high A level, and he was a 296 hitter there. Released by the Cardinals in May of 2015. Spent June in the Atlantic League with the York Revolution, and now with the Wichita Wingnuts. Here's the 2 1 pitch, grounded towards short, played on a couple hops by Maderos. He gathers, throws to first in time, getting Rodriguez hustling up the line by about a step. And now there's two outs. And the wing, that's half of the fifth inning. Score that one six to three on the ground out. So Rodriguez now one for three on the day. And here comes Joe Ash Brodeen. He's reached base safely both times he's been to the plate. Once was on a single, once was on an error. And he came around to score last inning. He led off in that fourth inning with the error. That was on the first baseman, Geiger. And then Brodeen came around to score. Brodeen's a 284 hitter who hits better against righties than lefties. That's what you expect from a left-handed hitter. First pitch fastball in there for a called strike. This is the first time he's faced Ryan Beckman in this game as the start of the fourth inning was Greg Holly at the time. From the windup, here's the pitch. Swung on, grounded to second. A backhand stop by Taylor on the shallow grass. He throws over to first in time. Three up and three down for the Wingnuts in the top of the fifth. We will go to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Lemurs lead this one 8-4. to four. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. 
Looking to travel this summer? If the year-round flights to Las Vegas aren't fit for you, take advantage of Allegiance Direct flights from Laredo International Airport to Orlando. For as low as $119 round trip, you and your family can be in Orlando in two and a half hours. Fly in comfort from your Laredo International Airport. Visit Allegiant.com for details and specials. Texas Outlaw Grill is a proud sponsor of your Laredo Lemurs, specializing in outlaw delicacies such as the Texican, the Gringo, and the Bandit Hot Dog in their ever-famous barbecue burger. Be the first to try their groundbreaking Cabarito Hamburger and Cabarito Hot Dog. For all-to-go orders, catering, and fundraising information, go by 5209 Springfield Suite Number 4 or call 956-771-1919. That's Texas Outlaw Grill. Laredo Sports Medicine Clinic, the official team doctors of your Laredo Lemurs. Now with two convenient locations to better serve you. Our north location is located at 9652 McPherson Road, Suite 12. Our south location is located at 5102 State Highway, 359. Laredo Sports Medicine offers an array of services from physical therapy to our newest service, orthopedic surgery. Laredo Sports Medicine Clinic is changing orthopedic care one athlete at a time. Visit our website at laredosportsmed.com for more information. Welcome to Whataburger. Today we're cooking the sweet and spicy bacon burger. Wow, it's beautiful. The two beef patties, American cheese, Monterey Jack cheese, bacon, grilled onions, the sweet and spicy pepper sauce. Sweet in the front and then the spicy in the back. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's like a perfect balance and then that bacon right there, it adds crunchiness. I get back in line and get another one, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> sweet and spicy bacon burger. Come down to Whataburger. It's only here for a limited time. Dustin Geiger leads things off for the Lemurs in the bottom of the fifth inning. He'll be followed by Juan Silverio and Brian Peterson. As the Lemurs have an 8-4 lead, they scored six runs in the bottom of the fourth inning to take that lead. And here's Geiger at the plate, looks at a fastball at the letters for a called strike. Alex Boshears on the mound, the 24-year-old right-handed hurler from the state of Tennessee. Here's the 0-1 pitch, stays high. He calls Nashville, Tennessee home, and he played his college ball for the Skyhawks at the University of Tennessee, Martin. And he's in his first season of professional baseball. He'll wind and throw, working quickly. The 1-1 pitch misses inside on an off-speed offering there. Longer hold here as Bo Shears will wind and throw again. Swung on, fouled off, straight in to the Wingnuts dugout. Geiger was out in front of that off-speed pitch. Boshears initially signed with the Gateway Grizzlies of the Frontier League at the start of the 2015 season, but didn't actually record any stats. He had a five-year career at the University of Tennessee Martin, appeared in 82 games and 247 career innings pitched. Off-speed pitch, just missing there as Geiger holds back and takes ball three. Boshears was a senior in 2014, pitched 67 in a third inning, starting six games, Appearing in 13 others, had a 1-4 and four record and a 6.15 ERA. Opponents hit 325 against him. Here's the payoff pitch. It's low. It gets away from the catcher, Dean. And Geiger will take his time and enjoy the walk. He'll relish the moment a little bit as he gets up the first baseline. He's on first with a leadoff walk. And that will bring up number 32, Juan Silverio. He's having a good game so far. He's 2-for-2, two two, a single and a home run. The home run coming in the second inning to lead off that frame and a single, and he came around to score in that last inning of a big, wild six-run fourth inning for the Lemurs. Let's see if he can keep the momentum going here and pick up a third hit. The runner on first is Geiger, no outs in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the pitch. Fastball in there at the knees for a called strike. Juan Silverio has seven home runs now on the season and 37 runs batted in. Coming into tonight's game, he was hitting 262. He's known to go on a tear every now and then. We might be witnessing one. Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's tapped down the third baseline. Scooped up by Kane. The throw to second is dropped. So Silverio will reach. And score an error on the second baseman, Vargas. As Kane struggled with the initial ground ball, the initial chopper, but he fielded it in plenty of time to at least get one out. The throw was right on the money. Vargas didn't have to move his glove very far. He just dropped it. 
got a good piece of it as it trickled into shallow right field. The runner's choosing not to advance there, so everybody is safe. Geiger is safe at second. Silverio is safe at first. It's the third error of the game by the wing net, so each team has now committed three errors. And with runners on first and second, still no outs, here's Brian Peterson. He's one for two, a single and a pop out. That's the righty Bo Shears. Wheels and deals, and here's the bunt. It's laid down the first baseline. An excellent sack bunt by the veteran Brian Peterson. Everybody moves up 90 feet. Geiger to third, Silverio to second. And now one out, runners on second and third. This puts the Lemurs in great position to add to this eight to four lead. So Peterson is just doing the little things in this game. He was at the plate last inning when a wild pitch, or no, check that. It was a steal attempt by Silverio with Runners on first and third. Silverio tried to steal second. A throwing error by Dean sent the ball into center field, and then a throwing error by the center fielder Ray, when Silverio tried to advance to third, allowed both runs to score. First pitch, fastball, missing inside on J.U.D. Valdez. So Brian Peterson was at the plate in a 4-2 game. He just kept the bat on his shoulder, watched the wildness unfold, and when he stepped back in, it was 4-4. Want to know the count to J.U.D. Valdez as the Wingnuts infield is in, trying to cut off this run. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball. Low. Ball two. First base is open for J.U.D. Valdez with Jared Medeiros on deck. No matter how you slice it, both of those guys are one for two on the day. Could be thinking about filling first base with a walk here and potentially turning on a double play situation. Valdez at the plate. Here's the breaking ball, and it misses inside for ball three. I think that's probably what the Wingnuts are thinking about here. An unintentional, intentional walk to J.U.D. Valdez. I would be very surprised if he swings the bat here. 3-0 the count. Runners on second and third. One out in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the pitch. Fastball at the letters. Called strike. I think Boshears was daring Valdez to swing the bat there. And Valdez said, no thanks. That was pitch number 19 on the day for Boshears. He's the third different pitcher the Wingnuts have used in this game. Righty-righty matchup continues. Here's the pitch to Valdez. Swung on, grounded down the third baseline, past the outstretched glove of Kane. One run will score. Grounding third and heading home is Juan Silverio. He's in standing up. It's a two-run double for J.U.D. Valdez. It's now 10-4 Lemurs. Another look on the stream coming up. That ball was just hugged the third base line and got into the left field corner. That was trouble right off the bat. A great effort by Kane as he dove and tried to at least knock that ball down but just couldn't get to it. Valdez with two RBIs on that swing. He stands on second base. There's still just one out. And the number nine hitter Jared Medeiros comes up to hit. So Geiger scored easily from third. Silverio hustled home and scored. Now Jared Medeiros in the right-handed batter's box. He's one for two. He singled and scored last inning. First pitch he sees. Swung on. Grounded back up the middle. This is playable at short. A high hop to Hernandez. The throw to first is in time. Advancing to third on the ground out is Valdez. That one goes six to three to get Medeiros for the second out of the fifth inning. Lineup will turn over. Here's Ty Morrison for a fourth time tonight. He's getting a fourth at bat in the fifth inning. I should say a fourth at bat in the game, and it's happening in the fifth inning. The Lemurs haven't batted around four times this inning. They're certainly batting a lot, just not that much. Lefty Morrison digs in to face the righty Bo Shears. The runner on third is Valdez. Here's the pitch. Fastball. High. Ball one. Morrison on the day. Two singles, one stolen base, two runs batted in, one double, two runs scored total. He's got the dirt stains on his pants to show for it. Here's the pitch. Off speed, missing low and inside, 2-0. Lemurs wearing their gold tops today with black lettering and black numbers. It says Lemurs in script across their chest. The wingnuts in camouflage tops with red lettering and numbering. We're used to seeing the Lemurs wearing Sunday camos. This one swung on grounded foul into the wingnuts dugout. It skips over the dugout and into the seats. So 2-1 and one now the count to Ty Morrison. He's having just a spectacular day at the plate. The center fielder for the Lemurs, a recent acquisition for the club, former Montgomery Biscuit. 
That's cool. That's, I hope he saved his, his biscuits, you know, gear, the hat and the t-shirt or something. It's one of my favorite minor league baseball team names. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fastball catches the inside corner, and it's now 2-2. Two and two, two outs. Runner on third. Two runs already in this inning for the Lemurs as they lead 10-4. to four. They have 13 hits to just five for Wichita as each team's committed three errors. 2-2 two, two pitch on the way. Swung on and tapped foul as that just barely got a piece of the bat of Ty Morrison. He was lunging. He was clearly fooled by that pitch. It just got enough of it to stay alive. Gorgeous night in Laredo. Very few clouds in the sky. It's pretty clear, and it is hot. First pitch temperature was 107. It really hasn't cooled down all that much. Here's the 2-2 offering. Swung on, and another defensive cut. And once again, it gets a piece of Dean. And the catcher shaken up after that when he goes down to a knee. Takes the face mask off. Up to the top step of the dugout is Wingnuts manager Kevin Hooper. But Dean shakes him off, says, I'm fine. New baseball delivered to the mound by the home plate umpire. And we will get back underway. Devontre Richardson stands on deck. He's one for three on the day, but had an RBI hit in the big Lemurs rally last inning. That saw six runs come across. Two runs scored this inning after Lemurs scored one run in each of the first two innings. The only inning they were shut out in was the third. From the stretch, here's the 2-2. Swung on, tapped back up the middle. Stabbed by... Bo Shears, the pitcher, reaches out and says, look what I found. He'll flip over to first for the third out of the inning. And that will do it for the Lemurs. No, check that. They were going to call catcher interference. So the inning stays alive. That was a weak hit there by Morrison. And judging by the swing he made, something was clearly up with that. So, score that, a catcher's interference by the catcher, Dean. The inning stays alive. And we've got a situation here on the outfield with some guys out there running around on the outfield. I think that was some Wingnuts players who were just out there trying to get loose. It's the third time this series there's been a catcher's interference call. We hadn't seen any before that game. So, Devondre Richardson now to the plate. Runners on first and third. And here's the pitch. Runs inside, nearly hits Richardson on the buttock, and he has to duck out of the way. So Morrison is on first following the catcher interference. The runner on third is Valdez. Richardson at the plate, and the Lemurs can extend the 10-4 lead. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Fastball high and outside, nearly getting away from Dean and sailing to the backstop. But he scooted into the left-handed batter's box and made that stab. Big lead off of first for Morrison. Here's the pitch to Richardson. And that misses high and inside. 3-0 now the count to Devontre. And with Kevin Taylor standing on deck, the Lemurs are threatening to bat around once again. Two outs in the inning. Runners on the corners with Richardson at the plate. And here's the pitch. Fastball is just a get-me-over pitch, and it's called strike one. After Wichita was up 4-2 to two earlier in this game, it's been all Lemurs since then. Richardson chasing one in the dirt. It's fouled off, and it rolls towards the Lemurs' dugout. So the count now full to Devontre Richardson. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth inning, as this game has really slowed down in terms of pace. But that happens when the Lemurs have scored 10 runs in five innings and threatening for more. 10 runs on 13 hits, 3 errors for the Lemurs. For Wichita, 4 runs on 5 hits and 3 errors defensively. So, you can't say any team has been any better defensively than another. Wingnuts have turned 2 double plays, the Lemurs have turned 1 triple play. It's been a wild one from start to finish. Here's the 3-2 pitch, swung on, hit in the air towards shallow left field, dropping quickly, that's going to get down. Scoring from 3rd base easily is Valdez, holding up at 2nd is Morrison. Richardson keeps the inning alive. It's now 11 to four lemurs. So a big catcher's interference call during the Morrison at bat keeps the inning alive. Richardson makes the wingnuts pay for it by knocking in a run. And that'll bring up Kevin Taylor. He's the eighth hitter of the inning for the lemurs. They batted around last inning, actually sent Dennis Phipps to the plate twice. 
He singled, or he doubled to lead off the inning and ended the inning by striking out. Kevin Taylor at the plate. He's one for three with an RBI double. That came, of course, last inning. First pitch fastball at the letters. Called strike one on the outer half. Three runs on the board this inning for the Lemurs after six last inning. None in the third, one in the second, and one in the first. Bottom of the fifth with the Lemurs up 11-4. to four. Here's the pitch to Taylor. Fastball misses low and outside. Alex Boshears is the third pitcher the Wingnuts have used in this game. He hasn't been very effective, and there is some action in the Wingnuts bullpen, but I can't tell you who it is because it's partially obstructed from my view. One and one is the count. Here's the pitch. Fastball misses low. Two and one now to Taylor. Boshears, the relief pitcher, came in last inning. He's already up at 36 pitches. This one really getting away from the wing nuts. Righty on the hill, lefty in the batter's box. Here's the pitch. Fastball misses low and inside. Three and one now the count. Runners on first and second for the Lemurs with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Rado comes into the game with a 33 and 28 record. They're third in the American Association South Division. Wichita is the division leader. They're 37 and 24. Here's the 3 1 pitch. Swung on, grounded towards second base. Played on a couple hops by Vargas. He scoops, throws to first. No catcher interference here. The inning is finally over. Three runs across for the Lemurs. They send eight hitters to the plate. Plate the three runs. We will head to the top of the six. Lemurs leading 11 to 4. Sweating through another barn burner at your team's bar? Sure am. Wish you had some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in meeting new people. Epic fist bumps, epic forearm bumps, epic or chest bumps, touchdown dancing, break dancing, line dancing, dancing like nobody's watching, awesome refreshment, refreshment for the win, and one-of-a-kind Rocky Mountain cold refreshment. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <laughs> when cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost-brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Falcon Bank and the Laredo Lemurs are a winning combination. At Falcon, they know what counts. Personalized service, attention to detail, and genuine commitment to helping customers achieve their dreams. Falcon Bank, guided by faith, grounded by family, and committed to you. Need a little spark in your life? Then come on out to Unitrade Stadium for Friday Night Fireworks. Tickets start as low as $5, and you'll get to see great baseball and great fireworks all in one night. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS or go online at LaredoLemurs.com. I'll see you at the ballpark. Hey, Lemurs fans, every Thursday night at Unitrade Stadium is a thirsty Thursday. Come on out and enjoy cold Miller Lite draft beers for only $1. That's right, beer for a buck. You can get tickets online at LaredoLemurs.com or by phone at 956-7-LEMURS. I'll see you at the ballpark. Unitrade continues to provide solutions in foreign trade through a highly satisfactory customs brokerage service. Unitrade has quality trained personnel devoted to the highest level of customer service. For all your transportation, distribution, and consolidation needs, it's Unitrade. Chavarria's Plum Chavarria's Plumbing. We get set to go here in the top of the sixth inning from Unitrade Stadium in Laredo. It's a warm one, and the action on the field has been, well, it would be cliche to say hot. It's been crazy. Let's say that. Four errors for the wing nuts, three for the lemurs. As from a scorekeeping technicality, that catcher's interference last inning was an error. As Ryan Beckman back on the mound. Matt Padgett, the former lemur, digs in. The first pitch fastball misses low and outside. The score in this game, 11 to 4 lemurs. They scored one in the second, one in the or one in the first, one in the second. Wichita scored the next four runs. Then the lemurs exploded for six in the fourth and three in the fifth. 1-0 pitch. Called ball two as it misses low and outside once again. So how about a game of runs? The lemurs scored the first two, then Wichita scored four straight. Now the lemurs have scored the last nine. Advantage Laredo. The righty Beckman comes set at the belt. He'll wind and throw. Fastball catches the inside corner for strike one on Matt Padgett. Padgett's one for one today, a single and a walk, and he came around to score in that fourth inning in which Wichita played it three runs. Beckman set once again. And here's the pitch. Swung on, hit high and deep towards left field, going back to the track, leaping, and it's gone. Matt Padgett leads off the sixth inning with a solo shot. 
It's now 11 to 5. And Wichita has broken the nine straight runs scored by the Lemurs. So former Lemur Matt Paget, who didn't hit any home runs in 12 games with the Lemurs, comes back to bite his former team in the 50th game he's played. 50th game he's played with Wichita this year. That's his second home run against the Lemurs this season after he had one in a game in Wichita earlier. Base is empty, and Harrison Kane digs in. He's another former Lemur. He looks at a first pitch fastball. This is low and inside for ball one. Kane did not play with the Lemurs this year. His last stint with Laredo was last season, and actually also played with the team the season before that as well. 2013 and 2014 Lemur swings and grounds this one to third base. Silverio gathers. He throws to first in time for the out. Five to three on the ground out for Harrison Kane. He's now one for three. He's had an eventful day. In the fourth, he singled and came around to score and also knocked in a run with that single. But in the second, he hit into a triple play. When I tell you we've seen it all today, folks, we've really seen pretty much everything. We've seen a triple play, a catcher interference, a six-run inning, two different solo home runs to lead off two separate innings, two double plays, both turned by the wing nuts. I mean, if, you, if you're playing baseball bingo and you're ch checking off things that can happen in a baseball game, I'm not sure what's left. Nobody's been hit by a pitch yet. Nobody's been ejected from the game yet. We haven't seen a grand slam yet. That's a, that's a pretty good one. Owen won the count to Luis Hernandez after that first pitch was in there for a strike. He swings and misses at that one. Uh, we haven't seen a balk. That's another pretty random play. We haven't seen a ground rule double. I mean, some of the weirder things that you can see in a baseball game. Uh, we've certainly seen some of them. A catcher interference and a triple play in the same game. Luis Hernandez at the plate. Base is empty. He's behind in the count 0-2. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Tapped foul into the backstop. See, now that I'm starting to think about this, I'm just going to be thinking about the rest of this inning. I'm going to be thinking about other things that would be You'd, you'd put on a baseball bingo card. Bill, you'll, you're going to have to help me with this and, you know, get on the headset and holler anytime you think of another one. 0-2 the count to Luis Hernandez in the left-handed batter's box. He's 1-2 for two on the day. Here's the pitch. It's low and in the dirt. Scooped up by Peterson. It's ball one. We haven't seen a triple yet in this game. A bunch of doubles for the Lemurs, but no triples. The most exciting play in baseball. How could you forget? Those are rare, but I would say triple plays are, are more rare. One-two pitch on the way. Swung on, hit foul, and Hernandez stays alive. Luis Hernandez is 30 years old out of Venezuela. He played 17 games with the New York Mets in 2010, hitting two home runs with six runs batted in. His season ended in 2010 after hitting a foul ball, a foul ball off his right foot, which broke a bone, although he still managed to hit a home run on the next pitch. That's one of those things that legends are made of, you know? That's that's one of those things you, you hear guys talking about some of the greats who played this game, and they have tall tales like that. Well, this one's actually true. Luis Hernandez last appeared in the majors in 2012 with the Texas Rangers, two games as defensive replacement, and he went 0-1 at the plate in each. Here's the 1-2. Fastball misses inside. That was close. 2-2 two and two now the count to Hernandez. For a former major leaguer, he certainly hasn't put up the massive numbers in the American Association this year. He's hitting just 249 through 60 games with Wichita. He was a career 243 hitter in the majors. Fastball comes in high and tight. Ducking out of the way is Hernandez. He's okay. That one didn't hit him, and it's called ball three. Count now full as Beckman just trying to keep the game rolling. He did allow a leadoff home run to Padgett to make the score 11-5, to but the Lemurs... Comfortably ahead in this ball game. They want to keep it that way. Payoff pitch. Swung on. Hit down the first base line. Scooped up on the backhand by Geiger. A nice pick out of the dirt. And he will flip to the covering Beckman. And the pitcher taps the bag for out number two. Score that one three to one. And that was far from a routine play there by Geiger. He could have waited back on that ball. Let it take an extra bounce. He was proactive. He charged it and fielded it just as it was about to hit the ground for what would have been, I think, a third time. A chopper. And, uh, just a nice play. But also credit to the infield. Credit to the grounds crew who made that play possible. As with as much heat 
that you get here in Laredo. Temperatures reach as high as 107 or 108 here today. It really bakes the dirt as the first pitch fastball in there for a called strike on Brent Dean. As much as it's possible for the field to get warped and deformed by all the action that happens on an infield, they keep it the playing surface as close to pristine as you can pretty much get in Laredo, Texas. 0-1 pitch to Dean. Swung on, grounded to second base. Played on the shallow outfield grass by Taylor as the shift was on. He gathers and makes the throw to first in time. Four up and three down as Matt Paget led off the inning with a home run, but that was it for the Wingnuts. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Lemurs lead 11 to five. Core Business Solutions is a proud sponsor of Lemurs Baseball. Core Business Solutions services the 17 southernmost counties of Texas, as well as areas of northern Mexico. They offer a wide range of high-tech solutions for businesses and organizations. Make Core Business Solutions your solution today. For all of your vehicle collision repair and paint needs, there's only one place to turn. Mike's Paint Place. Mike's Paint Place has computerized color matching and digital imaging. They also do full frame and suspension repairs. Stop by and see Mike's Paint Place today at 60 410 Polaris Drive in Laredo. Hey fans, every Monday night at Unitrade Stadium is Margarita Monday. Come on out to the ballpark and cool off with an ice cold margarita for only $2. But please do not drink them too fast. You might get a brain freeze. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMERS. Check us out at LaredoLemers.com. Tokyo Garden of Laredo is located at 2515 East Del Mar Boulevard and they serve the best sushi in town. Stop by Tokyo Garden for a quick lunch or a fancy dinner. Either way, you're going to enjoy our fine cuisine. Did you just get off work? Then come on by and check out our happy hour specials. Tokyo Garden, where you'll find the best sushi in Laredo. Right now, when you sign up for a Gold's Gym membership, you'll get tons of extras completely free. Confidence, free. Compliments from your coworkers, free. And the desire to wear tiny bathing suits, you guessed it, free. You'll be stronger with extras, and you'll be stronger with Gold's Gym. Know your own strength. Tiny bathing suit not included. Pro Mega Signs of Laredo is there for all of your printing and signage needs. We can be found at 1615 Jackman Road in Laredo, or you can reach us by phone at 956-723-2110. Again, that's 956-723-2110. If you need a sign, big or small, come to Pro Mega Signs of Laredo, where your print job is just around the corner. Breakfast speaks for itself here at Whataburger. It's going to be hot, it's going to be fresh. It's almost like when you were a kid and you wake up in the morning, you can smell mom cooking breakfast. I like their hash browns. My favorite is the honey butter chicken biscuit. I like the taquitos. We have some fresh cracked eggs here. I like these pancakes because they're fluffy. <laughs> I really like the fact that you can get into Whataburger real fast and bring it on the go. We're cooking breakfast for you at Whataburger. In over 40 years, nobody's helped more families achieve the American dream of home ownership than Armadillo. In fact, Armadillo Homes has built more homes than all other builders combined. And there are reasons for this. Integrity, responsibility, service, and of course, quality. So if you're thinking about making the greatest investment in your life, think of the one builder who's dedicated its entire life to helping the Laredo family. Think Armadillo Homes, armadillohomes.com. Go Lemurs. Dennis Phipps will lead things off for the Lemurs in the bottom of the sixth as they try to extend an 11-5 lead. They had scored nine straight, and then Matt Padgett led off the top of the sixth inning for the Wingnuts with a solo home run. But it's been all Lemurs at this point in this game. Swung on and hits this one in the air towards shallow center field. That'll drop for a leadoff single, and Phipps is now 3-4 for four on the day. He scored a run and knocked in a run. He starts off the sixth inning on a positive note for the Lemurs. It is still very warm here in Laredo, Texas. 103 degrees right now at 8.15 p.m. Central Time. So even if we had started this game at 7.30 as we start every night except Sunday nights, it would still be hot. Temperature at first pitch at 6 p.m. tonight was 107 degrees. It felt like 109. And the players can just be grateful that it's not an artificial turf field out here as that would have just been inhumane. Phipps stands on first, Dustin Geiger at the plate, and the new pitcher for the Wingnuts is Alex Coronas. Forgot to mention that during Phipps at bat. First pitch fastball in there for a called strike on Geiger. Coronas is making his fifth appearance of the season for the Wingnuts. He started three games, so this is just his second appearance in relief. He has an 0-1 record and a 3.17 ERA. 
Righty righty matchup for their second pitch in the dirt. Evens up the count at one and one. Kernis is 27 years old. The righty is six foot two, 187 pounds, out of the University of Tampa, home of the Spartans. He's pitched 17 innings, struck out 11, walked eight, and allowed 14 hits. This is his second appearance of this series. This first one was in the series opener, in which he went one inning. Breaking ball in there for a called strike on Geiger. Struck out two, walked one in that uh, nine to one win for the Wingnuts. He faced just four batters. Very nice, 3.17 ERA for the young man who hasn't played professional baseball since 2012. So he's on the comeback trail. This fastball misses high. Geiger, I think, was prepared to have that be called strike three. He made a half step back towards the dugout. So I think he was prepared to be rung up on a strikeout looking. So he gets a second chance. Two and two the count, a runner on first. The wing that's infield is at double play depth. As Coronas will come set and throw. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. Fooled Geiger there. He goes down swinging. He's now 0 for 3 on the day. He did walk and score last inning. But that's the first out of the inning. Juan Silverio will come to the plate. He's been swinging a hot bat today. He's reached base every time he's come to the plate. He's scored every time he's come to the plate. He homered in the second, singled in the fourth, and came around to score. And last inning, reached on an error, and then came around to score. He'll dig into the right-handed batter's box. His 262 average coming into tonight's game. It's bound to rise a couple points if he keeps hitting like this. Phipps is on first with a pretty average lead. Here's the pitch. Swung on. Hit in the air. Down the left side. And that's going to be a fair ball down into the left field corner. And the umpires calling the play dead. That's a ground rule double for Juan Silverio. I think that one was spinning wildly as it hooked down the third baseline and got into the corner and became unplayable for the left fielder Joe Ash Brodeen. So there you go. Silverio came up to the plate with the wing nuts thinking about turning two. Now the next hitter, Brian Peterson, won't have to worry about that. Runners on second and third for Peterson. He's one for two. A single, a pop out, and a sack bunt for the lemurs catcher. Let's see if they can get him going. Wingnuts defense coming in a little bit, but they're not all the way in. This one swung on, chopped back up the middle, fielded it short. He'll take his time, chase the runner back to second, and then throw over to first to get Peterson out for the second out of the inning. So Peterson, rare to see him be that impatient at the play. Swung at the first pitch and didn't really make great contact there. He goes 6-3 to three on the ground out for the second out of the inning. And here comes J.U.D. Valdez. The 37-year-old catcher is usually a very patient hitter and really works pitchers. A cerebral baseball player, but he must have liked something about that pitch and just didn't quite deliver on it. So here's Valdez, righty-righty matchup. Valdez is two for three today. He has two runs batted in and one run scored. Here's the pitch. Fastball to letters, called strike one. Coronas on the mound. He's a former 11th round pick. Drafted by the Rays from the University of Tampa. Played four seasons in the Rays organization. And also was with the Montgomery Biscuits in 2012 for 24 games. Big breaking ball. Swung on and missed as Valdez was way out in front of that. Coronas actually started his college career at the University of Miami. He posted a 9.00 ERA with 22 strikeouts in 30 innings. And then transferred to the University of Tampa for the final two years of his college career. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Misses low, blocked well by Dean. That nearly five-holed him and got to the backstop. Cronus, the former Tampa Spartan, drafted by the Tampa Rays. is making just his first, this is his first season back since 2012. Link some injuries. This one swung on. Hit well towards left field. Going back to the track. If it's fair, it's gone. It's a fair ball. It's a three-run homer for J.U.D. Valdez. And the hits just keep coming for the Lemurs. It's now 14-5. To call this an offensive explosion might be a bit of an understatement. Six runs in the fourth. 
three in the fifth, now three in the sixth, after the three-run blast by Jayudi Valdez, and that one got out of here in a hurry. So in comes the number nine hitter, Jared Medeiros. Now the problem for the Lemurs just becomes, well, who, who's the player of the game? Who do you pick? Good problems to have, I guess. As the Lemurs have now racked up 17 hitch with hits, which, which is the sixth time they've done that. And they don't have 18 hits in a game yet this season. Want to know the count to Medeiros? Here's the pitch. It's popped up. This will stay in the infield. Calling everyone else off is the second baseman, Vargas, and he will squeeze for the third and final out. The Lemurs, though, three runs on three hits thanks to a J.U.D. Valdez three-run blast. We are through six innings at Unitrade Stadium. The Lemurs up by nine runs on the division-leading Wichita Wing Nuts. Since Accenting Technologies opened for business in 1998, they have worked to establish solid relationships with their clients. They are set to maintain the highest standards of service and integrity and to perform work of only the highest quality, achieving client satisfaction on every project. They have attained these goals through a tradition of care and professional pride. They serve a wide range of corporations and small business franchises. Accenting Technologies has the tools and expertise for any technical need that your business may have. Call us here in Laredo at 725-2654. That's 725-2654 for Ascending Technologies. Todos sabemos que podemos lograr más cuando estamos listos. Por eso, decidí matricularme en Texas A&M International University. Quiero un título universitario y las oportunidades que me brindará. Tammy U me ha recibido a mí y a 7,000 estudiantes de todo el mundo. Tammy U me impulsa a ser grande, enciende mi mente y hace mi corazón latir. Imagina las posibilidades cuando eres impulsado por Tammy. Inscríbete ahora para verano y otoño. Visita tamiu.edu y sé impulsado. Capital Care EMS, located at 1510 Kailan Norte Suite Number 11, invites you to experience a new standard in medical transportation. Servicing Laredo and all surrounding areas, Capital Care EMS provides transports to wound care treatments, HBO treatments, dialysis treatments, doctor's appointments, radiation treatments, chemotherapy treatments, and many more. From emergency medical transport to x-rays and lab work, our state-certified EMTs and paramedics are readily available 24 hours a day when you need them most. Capital Care EMS accepts most most major medical insurances, including Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, and many more. Capital Care EMS. All right, top of the seventh inning. Ryan Beckman still on the mound for the Lemurs to take you the rest of the way. Here's Bill Harrington. Thank you very much, Cameron. Did I miss something while I was gone? I was taking a nap in the back here, and I wake up, and wow. There's a big score up on the board. 14 to 5 Lemurs. And stepping into the batter's box is Leo Vargas against Ryan Beckman. Beckman throws, and that is a little bit low. So quite a bit to talk about, of course, while Cameron Sanger was on the air. Six runs come in to score in the fourth inning. The Lemurs pick up seven hits in that inning. The Lemurs picked up three more runs in the fifth. And the 1-0 is outside. And the Lemurs just saw Jayudi Valdez hit a long ball over the left field wall for three more runs up on the board. So it's been quite a night with a triple play being turned by the Laredo Lemurs as well this evening. The 2-0 pitch, a strike on the outside part of the plate. So it's 14-5 in favor of the Lemurs as they try to even up this series with the Wichita Wingnuts before Wichita heads on out of town. A 2-1 count as Beckman working out of the stretch. He'll throw home. That one swung on and tapped off the plate, charging Silverio. He'll let it hop one more time, and it's going to take a hop and just kind of die there. That'll be a base hit. So Leo Vargas reaches on a single. Silverio was going to try to grab it with his bare hand and throw over to first base. Really, that's the only play he had was to try to grab it with his bare hand because Leo Vargas is pretty quick. So Jace Ray now coming up to the plate. So here's your line score for the for the night so far. 14 runs on 17 hits. The Lemurs have made three errors. For Wichita, it's five runs on seven hits. They've made four errors in the ball game. Jace Ray, the batter, runner at first base, and nobody out. The pitch swung on in a ground ball. One hopped right back to Beckman. He'll flip to second for one. It's over to first base. It's a double play. Just like that, the Lemurs turn two, and quickly two outs are up on the board. So a 1-6-3 double play. 
And if you were not with us back in the second inning, the Lemurs turned a triple play, went 5-4-3. It was a ground ball to Juan Silverio. He touched the bag at third. Then he ended up throwing over to second. Taylor then threw to first. And it was a triple play. So runners were at first and second when the double play or when the triple play ball was put into play. Harrison Kane actually hit into the triple play, a former Lemur. So this is the last home game for the Lemurs until August. Yeah, August 2nd, they'll be back in town to face off against Sioux Falls. The Canaries are coming down. They're going to fly out of their coop up there in Sioux Falls, and they're going to come on down to play the Lemurs. Here's the pitch to the new batter, David Espinoza. Espinoza was hit by a pitch back in the third inning. He's officially 0 for 2 today. A strikeout looking and a ground out. 14 to 5, Laredo. And the pitch. A fastball away. Two balls and no strikes. That's 17 hits that the Lemurs have picked up here tonight. That's the sixth time this year that the Lemurs have picked up 17 hits. And you might think that's a record, but it's not. The Lemurs' hit record in one game is 27 hits. The 2 0. Swung on in a liner down the right field line. That one smoked pretty good. Phipps is going to run it down. And David Espinosa is going to stick with a single. Yeah, the Lemurs last year in 2014 had one heck of a potent offense. And like I said, they had 27 hits in one game, which is a not only a team record, but a league record. And they scored 22 runs in a game that same day. And that's a team record. And the most runs in an inning is 10, which is also a team record. All of that stuff coming on the same day for the Laredo Lemurs. As here's the first pitch to start in Rodriguez. He takes a strike on the outside part of the plate. Most home runs in a game is six by Laredo. And that all happened last year in 2014. The 0-1 pitch, swung on and missed, a change up there and way out in front with Starlane Rodriguez. Last year, the Lemurs finished third in the league in hitting. They had a 298 team batting average. They led the league in home runs. They had 115 home runs. That was a team record as well. No balls and two strikes. The pitch swung on and missed. That's strike three. That's going to do it for Wichita. And we're going to head to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Laredo Lemurs are coming up to the plate. 14 to 5. Lemurs. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to fewer guys with beer bellies, which led to more women attracted to those guys, which led to dates, second dates, wedding bells, and honeymoons, which led to hubbada hubbada, boom, which led to you. Miller Lights, we invented light beer, and you, you're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hey, ¿tienes algo que celebrar? ¿Que le salió el primer diente a tu hijo? ¿Que tu abuelita aprendió a tuitear? ¿Que cambiaste tu cheque? La respuesta es la misma. Pues un carne sazo. No importa lo que estés celebrando, lo que importa es que lo celebres. Pues con un carne sazo de HEB. En HEB encuentras gran variedad de cortes a precios bajos y de buena calidad. Carne sazo. Carne asada con ganas solo en HEB. This summer, Allegiant will increase to four weekly flights to Las Vegas, Nevada. If gambling in Vegas isn't your thing, Allegiant is also increasing to two weekly flights to Orlando. Enjoy the Disney theme parks, Legoland, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, and the Kennedy Space Center. Flying comfort from your Laredo International Airport. Visit Allegiant.com for details and specials. Before your Memorial Day party gets going, drive over to Ashley Furniture Home Store this week for our best Memorial Day sale ever. Get dramatic price reduction store-wide or no interest until January 2021. Choose from sofas and sectionals, all at unbelievably low prices. Plus, find savings on beds and amazing deals on dining rooms. It's our best Memorial Day sale ever, so don't wait. Hurry over to Ashley Furniture Home Store right now. Ashley Furniture Home Store. This is home. 4520 San Bernardo Avenue, Laredo, Texas, 956-712-2401. Subject to credit approval. Minimum monthly payments required. See store for details. Yes. South Texas families never strike out with Driscoll Health Plan. Catch the value-added services we pitch to our Medicaid members. Enjoy a free membership to specific boys and girls clubs. Receive gift cards for completing Texas health care checkups. Restrictions and limitations may apply. Visit us at DriscollHealthPlan.com. Three, two, one, number one. That's Laredo's number one Chevy dealer. Family Chevrolet turns the best day ever into the best month ever. 15% off. Not good enough.
Lemur's coming up in the bottom half of the seventh inning. I'm going to go ahead and get you the scoreboard from around the American Association, bringing you up to date on what's going on in the rest of the league. Of course, a lot of other stuff happening. A lot of games already in the books today. Some day games out there in the American Association. Luckily, we did not play a day game here today. Wow, it was hot. Still is hot. We should just do that. Wow hot. It's wow hot in Laredo. Put that on Twitter. Pound wow hot. I just made it up. Sounds pretty good, right? Here's Ty Morrison facing off against the new pitcher, Daniel Bennett. Bennett will throw, and that one is swung on and tapped off the plate. Morrison having a nice day. He is three for three, and he reached on a catcher's interference. So that at bat does not go against him, but he is three for three. All right, so here's your scoreboard. Winnipeg beats Kansas City today 14 to two. They played at one o'clock. I bet it wasn't 107 in Kansas City today. I bet it was humid, though. It's usually pretty humid there. No balls on one strike, especially this time of year. I don't know which is worse, the humidity or the just the super hotness. The yo one outside. I asked a couple of the players the other day, I said, would you guys rather play in the humidity or just the Laredo heat? They said the Laredo heat by far because it's dry. You don't get that stickiness going. One ball and one strike. And the pitch. Low. Two balls and one strike. Amarillo today all over Sioux Falls. They were playing that game up in Amarillo. It's a 12-7 final there. Joplin beats Grand Prairie. 5 nothing. Joplin will be playing the Lemurs up in Joplin after the two days off. The pitch swung on and a fly ball into left field. Ranging for the left fielder, Brodeen. Brodeen will get into the corner. He'll watch the ball bounce foul. So that'll make it a 2-2 count. Ball pretty well hit down the left field line. It had a lot of hang time to it. But it ends up falling foul. And Ty Morrison will come back and grab the bat again. Well, he's picked up three hits in a lemur's uniform already. He's looking for to make it four hits on the nine. That'll be the first time he's done that in a lemur's uniform. If he could pick up his fourth hit. And if he picks up his fourth hit here, that'll be 18 hits for the lemurs. And that'll be an all-time high for this year's lemurs team, the 2-2. That's called strength three. Well, forget about that. We'll have to wait for the next batter to see if the lemurs can get 18 hits in a game. But it's funny, they've installed that at 17 six times this year. Not that it's stalling out. I mean, to get up to 17 hits is not easy to do. But for it to happen six times in one season is kind of odd. So here's Devontre Richardson. He's two for four on the day, so he can definitely pick up another hit. He sees a pitch, and it clips the outside corner for a strike. Sioux City today beat Gary 4-1. to one. That game was a 2-0-9 start. I don't think it was scheduled for 209, but that's when it got started. Here's the 01. Swung on and grounded foul. That actually will go back to the screen. Lemurs up 14 to 5 over Wichita. St. Paul big over Lincoln 12 to 4. So that one's in the books. So we're the only game left going. This is the only game in town right now. No balls and two strikes to Richardson. Bottom of the seventh inning. Lemurs still have plenty of time for another offensive explosion. The pitch, high and away. Make it a count of one ball and two strikes now to Devontre. So Devontre back in the first inning, flew out to right. Then he grounded into a double play in the third. Singled and drove in a run in the fourth inning. And singled and drove in a run in the fifth. He swings and misses here. And that's strike three. So two down in the inning. And that'll bring up Kevin Taylor. Dennis Phipps will be on deck for the Laredo Lemurs. So we can take a look at the standings now in the American Association. We can kind of do the math and look forward to what might happen here tonight. But through the route, throughout the rest of the league, St. Paul is just crushing everybody. Here's the pitch, and it's low and outside to Taylor. St. Paul, get this, is 47-15 on the year. They have a 19-and-a-half game lead over Winnipeg. 19-and-a-half games. The 1-0. Change up inside. Sioux Falls and Fargo, they're way back. Sioux Falls is 22 games out, and Fargo is 24-and-a-half. Sioux City has turned it on, and Kansas City has lost a little bit of, of their momentum in the Central Division. 
So Kansas City is now nine games back. The 2-0 pitch swung and fouled off. When I was up in Sioux City with the Lemurs last week, the Sioux City Explorers were worried about Kansas City coming on strong at the end, but they have lost three games in a row, have the T-Bones, and Sioux City has held tight. They're 7-3 and three over their last 10. So they're now nine games up over the Kansas City T-Bones. So the South Division is the lively division. It's the division where there's some races going on. Two balls and one strike. And the pitch. Swung in and a ground ball over to the third baseman. Backhanding it is Harrison Kane. He'll hit off of his wrist and go into left field. That's going to be a base hit there for Kevin Taylor. That'll be his second hit of the game. By the way, everybody in the Lemurs lineup has a base hit except for Dustin Geiger. We have to see if Dustin Geiger can get on the board. So the Joplin Blasters and the Laredo Lemurs are sitting back behind the Wichita Wingnuts in the South Division. Wichita with a 37 and 24 record. And if the Lemurs go on and win, it'll be 37 and 25 for Wichita, and that'll put both Joplin and Laredo a little bit closer. Here's a fly ball out to right field off the bat of Phipps. Ranging over is Rodriguez. Starlin will get there and make the catch. And that's it for Laredo. No runs a hit, no errors, and one left. We're going to go to the top of the eighth. Wichita coming up to the plate. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. It's 14-5 to 5 Lemurs. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Catholic College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Kaplan College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Kaplan College does not guarantee employment or career advancement. Information about programs at www.kaplancollege.com slash consumer dash info. Today at Whataburger, we're cooking the Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. The chicken is hot and fresh. It's got melted Monterey Jack cheese topped with lettuce, tomato, bacon, and then the honey mustard adds a nice sweet flavor to it. All the flavors come together just perfect. I mean, not only do I want to eat it, but I keep wanting to look at it. The crunchiness of the bacon adds a really nice texture. Honey mustard and chicken just go together. You know, sweet and savory, it's a perfect mix. Try the new Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. Only at Whataburger for a limited time. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to people wondering, L-I-T-E, that's how you spell light? Which led to people thumbing through their dictionaries. Which led to, there's got to be a better way to look up words. Which led to the invention of spell check. Which led to better resumes, promotions, celebrations, and happy hour. Miller Light, we invented light beer and happy hour. You're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Crowd at the bar making you sweat? Uh-huh. Could you use some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in epic nights, maximum refreshment, great times, awesome memories, high fives, smiles, Rocky Mountain refreshment, Blue Mountain refreshment, quadruple epic refreshment, killer parties, and totally refreshed killer parties. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <laughs> When cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Texas Inflatable Rentals has Laredo's largest water slides. Real proud to say that we serve the greater Laredo area and supply slip sliding fun for kids of all ages. Texas Inflatable Rentals has a huge selection of inflatables for every budget. And to add to the party, we rent tables, chairs, snow cone machines, popcorn machines, and cotton candy machines that will help take your party to the next level. We also have moonwalks and bounce houses. Contact Texas Inflatable Rentals at 956-436-3909 or at texasinflatablerentals.com and book with the coupon code LEMURS for a 10% discount. That's Texas Inflatable Reynolds, Laredo's largest water slide. All right, Joash Brodine leads it off for Wichita. New pitcher up on the mound for Laredo. It's B.J. Hyatt taking over. 14-5 to 5 LEMURS as we go to the top of the eighth inning. 
So Hyatt working out of the stretch. He'll throw to Joe Ash Brodine, and it's a fastball that's low. Hyatt starts the day with a 2-0 record and a 0.73 ERA through 24 games. He has been stellar. Absolutely awesome for the Laredo Lemurs. He has not given up a run in eight outings. That's over 10 and two-third innings. Here comes the 1-0 pitch from Hyatt. And that one swung on in a liner over the head of Kevin Taylor in the right center field. That's a base hit for Joe Ash Brodine. And that'll bring up Matt Pageant to the plate. So, of course, we had our triple play here earlier tonight back in the second inning. There was a major league triple play today, in case you missed that. You can go find it on MLB.com or any of your favorite sports websites. How many sports websites are out there? You got Sports Center, you got Bleacher Report, you got CBS Sports, all kinds of different options. ESPN.com. So pick your favorite, whichever one you like, and you can go see the Major League Triple Play. It involved the Toronto Blue Jays and the Seattle Mariners. Pretty interesting one, actually. A lot different from the one we had here. Here's Matt Pageant. He'll take a look at a pitch and it misses inside. Matt Pageant with a home run in his last at bat, his second home run against the Lemurs this season. He's just a troublemaker against Laredo. Runner at first base and nobody out. Lemurs looking for a double play ball. They do not need a triple play right now. The 1 0. Swung on and fouled off. In fact, the triple play is not even in order. Of course, if you pay attention to anything, in the majors, the Hall of Fame inductions went on today. Randy Johnson, Pedro Martinez, John Smoltz, and Craig Biggio all inducted into Cooperstown today. One ball and one strike. We were able to listen to it a little bit on the radio today, which was nice. And the 1-1 pitch, a breaking ball that misses up. Heard some of Craig Biggio's speech and a little bit from John Schmoltz. It'd be quite an event to be back there for uh, the Hall of Fame inductions in Cooperstown, New York. Definitely one of those things if you're a big baseball fan you need to experience once in your lifetime. Two balls and one strike to Pageant, And the delivery. Fastball low. So now it's 3-1 and one to Matt Pageant. Lemurs up 14-5. to five. So a big here, lead here for Laredo. Well, maybe this will kickstart something for the Laredo Lemurs moving forward. They've had a really nice game, even though they've made a couple of errors tonight. Still, overall, it's been a good game for them. The 3-1 pitch is high. That's a ball four. So, B.J. Hyatt a little bit out of whack right now. Walking Matt Pageant. And Harrison Kane coming up to the plate. Last thing B.J. Hyatt or the Laredo Lemurs want to do is give any life to the Wichita Wingnuts at this point. They want to keep them down. They want to keep the respirator off. That's the ninth walk given up on the season by B.J. Hyatt. B.J. Hyatt throwing in his, he's throwing 24 and two-third innings, so he's working in his 25th inning right now. Here's Harrison Kane stepping into the batter's box. Kane's the guy that actually hit into the triple play, and don't look now, but there's a triple play opportunity right now. Juan Soverio was the guy that got the ground ball, touched the bag at third, flipped to Taylor at second, and Taylor threw over to first base. And the pinch, low and away. I would think that'd be baseball history if Harrison Kane hit into another triple play right here. That would absolutely have to be the first time ever that that has happened. Not that it's going to, but that would have to be the first time ever. I can't imagine that ever happening twice in one game before. The 1-0. That's a strike on the outside corner. A fastball there. One ball, one strike. Hyatt working out of the stretch. He holds the baseball behind his back as he looks in to get the sign. And now with the set and the high leg kick, he brings it home, and it's a fastball away. So two balls and one strike to Kane. Kane starting the day for Wichita batting 328. Hyatt getting the sign from Brian Peterson. And the 2-1 pitch, swung on a line drive into left center field. On the run, Devontae Richardson. He'll get there into the gap, make the catch. And that'll be the first out in the inning, so everyone's going to stand pat down there. And there's one down, and Luis Hernandez coming up to the plate. So let's go ahead and get to the big league scoreboard. 
All the big league action going on today with the Hall of Fame induction and the triple play between Toronto and Seattle. It was a good pitching matchup between the New York Mets and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Zach Grinke's not allowing any runs ended up coming to an end. I think he went 42 and a third or 42 and two third innings when everything was said and done. Here's the pitch, swung and missed to the better Luis Hernandez. No balls and one strike. And the New York Mets got on the board in the third inning against Zach Greinke. No balls and one strike. Here's the pitch. And that's a ground ball over to the left side. Grab it in, Baderas will flip to second for one. Back over to first base. That's a double play, and that's going to end the inning. And we're going to go to the bottom of the eighth. I'll save the scoreboard for you. I'll keep the scoreboard motor running. When we get back, I'll give you the big league scoreboard. Lemurs up 14-5. to five. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Driscoll Health Plan loads the bases with value. We knock it out of the park with all the value-added services we bring to our Medicaid members. Driscoll families cheer on the Grand Slam packages, sports physicals, free memberships to boys and girls clubs, and dental care for pregnant women over 21. Take a swing at our baby showers offered by Cadena de Madre. Forget those peanuts and cracker jacks, root for our baby blankets and more. Come slide into home when you receive gift cards for completing Texas Health Steps checkups and attending postpartum visits on time. Don't miss a play. Restrictions and limits may apply. Visit DriscollHealthPlan.com. We'd like to imagine that if you're listening to this, it's on a radio in a backyard in between innings. The grass was mowed this morning, and the grill smells like heaven. And what do you know? Your friends just arrived with a 24-pack of Miller Lite, along with a few new friends to enjoy them with. Here's hoping we're right, and you're not just stuck in traffic. Here's hoping it's Miller time. Great beer, great responsibility. 2015 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Do you want to sit in a car for seven hours, risk a flat tire, traffic or highway construction delays? Fly direct from Laredo International Airport to Dallas-Fort Worth on American Airlines. From Dallas, you can change planes and take a flight to Tokyo, London, or even Rio de Janeiro. With four daily arrivals and departures, American Airlines is sure to have a connection that works best for you. So avoid spending hours in the car or risk an accident on the highway or even a flat tire. Fly in comfort from Laredo International Airport. Visit AA.com for details and to book a reservation. Looking to travel this summer? If the year-round flights to Las Vegas aren't fit for you, take advantage of Allegiance Direct flights from Laredo International Airport to Orlando. For as low as $119 round trip, you and your family can be in Orlando in two and a half hours. Fly in comfort from your Laredo International Airport. Visit Allegiant.com for details and specials. Texas Outlaw Grill is a proud sponsor of your Laredo Lemurs, specializing in outlaw delicacies such as the Texican, the Gringo, and the Bandit Hot Dog in their ever-famous barbecue burger. Be the first to try their groundbreaking Cabarito Hamburger and Cabarito Hot Dog. For all to-go orders, catering, and fundraising information, go by 5209 Springfield Suite No. 4 or call 956-771-1919. That's Texas Outlaw Grill. Here we go. Dustin Geiger to lead it off for the Lemurs. Juan Silverio will follow, and then Brian Peterson. Frankie Reed is now the pitcher. He's a left-handed thrower for the Wichita Wingnuts. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. And the pitch swung on, and that one's tipped foul someplace. 14-5 to five Lemurs in the bottom of the eighth inning. The Wichita Wingnuts on their sixth pitcher of the night. So it's 14, hit, 14 runs on 18 hits for the Lemurs. So the Lemurs have those 18 hits that they've been looking for. They've been held at 17. That's been their high all season long, six times. And now they have a new high with 18. Here's the 0-1. Fastball low and outside. Dustin Geiger, the only guy in the starting lineup tonight without a base hit. So he's looking to get one here. There's always that one guy that doesn't join the party. We'll see if Geiger can break that up. The pitch swung in a long fly off the bat of Geiger into left field. This one is going to be a foul ball. So Geiger hit it well, but well foul. 
So yeah, Gagger's night goes like this. A ground out to third, a strikeout swinging, a walk back in the fifth inning. He didn't come in to score a run then. And he also struck out in his last at bat in the sixth. You got Ty Morrison with three hits, Devontre Richardson with two, Kevin Taylor with two, Dennis Phipps with three hits, Silverio has three, Brian Peterson has one, Jayudi Valdez with three hits, and Jerry Medeiros with a hit. One ball and two strikes. The lefty will kick and throw, and that one is high for a ball. Two balls and two strikes. Here's that big league scoreboard that I told you I would get you. So Boston and Detroit, they're playing right now. Boston's up 4-1. to one. They're in the bottom of the fifth. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. Strength three to Geiger. And the relief pitcher, Frankie Reed, just went back and got all the fire he could and brought it forward. Juan Silverio, the batter. Baltimore beats Tampa Bay 5-2 to two today. They're playing in Tampa Bay. The White Sox, two. Indians, one. That one's in the books. All the rest of these will be finals. Mets beat the Dodgers 3-2. That game played in New York. Pirates over the Washington Nationals 3-1. Big series there. And the Kansas City Royals beat the Houston Astros 5-1. The pitch swung on and missed. I don't know if you saw it, but the Royals picked up Cueto from Cincinnati. So they have a new pitcher, and he is good. So Kansas City going to try to make another run at the World Series. Well, they're young enough, and they got the bullpen to do it. They got some guys that can hit as well. They got a good defense. Wow. They're a good baseball team. Yankees 7, Twins 2. That game played in Minnesota. The 0 1 to Silverio. He takes low. Silverio has scored four times tonight, and he has a solo home run. In fact, after he started the triple play, the first pitch he came up in the next at bat, and he hit his home run. He was actually the first batter in the next half inning, and he hit that home run. Amazing. The 1-1 pitch, swung on and fouled back. Atlanta beat St. Louis 3-2. And the Phillies over the Cubs 11-5. Look at the Philadelphia Phillies coming out of nowhere. Horrible team, but they're on fire as of late. Of course, they had the no-hitter thrown up there by Cole Hamels yesterday. One ball and two strikes. One out in the inning. We're in the bottom of the eighth. The Lemurs have to play defense one more time to try to get a win. The pitch, swung on in a ground ball over to the right side. Vargas is in front of it. He'll throw it over to first base, and that'll take care of Juan Silverio. Two down, Brian Peterson, the batter for Laredo. Well, look at what the Colorado Rockies did today. They scored big, 17-7 to over the Cincinnati Reds. That's a major league final for you. Rockies 17, Reds 7. The Giants sweep out the Oakland A's, so with their win today, they... Sweep the Bay Bridge series. And the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim beat the Texas Rangers 13-7. So here's Brian Peterson with two down. Peterson picked up his lone hit of the game back in the second inning, so he's looking for another. The lefty will throw home, and that one swung in. And a ground ball up the middle. There is his second base hit of the game. Brian Peterson with a multi-hit game today. He takes a swing at that first pitch. He swung at the first pitch in his last at bat. Remember, he grounded out to the shortstop. Grounded out 6-3 to three in that at bat. Here's J.U.D. Valdez. Valdez, uh, triple short of the cycle here. So, don't want to jinx it or anything, but there you go. But you just jinxed it. The broadcaster's jinx. Is it going to come down the pipe? Or, hey, maybe it'll be a reverse broadcaster's jinx it, since you said it beforehand. The pitch swung on and fouled away. Don't see a whole lot of triples in this ballpark. If you do see them, they're usually down the right field line. It's 345 down the right field line here at Unitrade Stadium. It's 325 down the left field line here at the ballpark. 14 to 5 Laredo, bottom of the eighth inning, runner at first and two down. The pitch in the dirt. That'd be a first for the Laredo Lemurs as well if they can get a cycle. They have not had a batter hit for the cycle. They've had guys hit for the cycle against them, but they have never had batters a batter for the Laredo Lemurs hit for the cycle. Padres beat the Miami Marlins today 3-2. to two, And the Arizona Diamondbacks win 3-0 over Milwaukee. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball comes in. 
very far inside and has, has to scatter J.U.D. Valdez. He goes running out of the batter's box after that one. Lemur's now with 19 hits, by the way, so with every hit, it's a new season high. Remember, 27 is the all-time lead for the Laredo Lemurs in hits in one game. It's the all-time high. It's actually the high for the American Association as well. The 2-1. Swung in on a chopper over to the third baseman, Kane. He'll have it on a good hop. He'll fire it over to first base, and that'll do it for the Lemurs. No runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. We're going to go to the top of the ninth. The Lemurs are going to try to lock down a victory. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Laredo Sports Medicine Clinic, the official team doctors of your Laredo Lemurs. Now with two convenient locations to better serve you. Our north location is located at 9652 McPherson Road, Suite 12. Our south location is located at 5102 State Highway, 359. Laredo Sports Medicine offers an array of services from physical therapy to our newest service, orthopedic surgery. Laredo Sports Medicine Clinic is changing orthopedic care one athlete at a time. Visit our website at laredosportsmed.com for more information. Welcome to Whataburger. Today we're cooking the sweet and spicy bacon burger. Wow, it's beautiful. Two beef patties, American cheese, Monterey Jack cheese, bacon, grilled onions, the sweet and spicy pepper sauce. Sweet in the front and then the spicy in the back. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's like a perfect balance and then that bacon right there, it adds crunchiness. I'd get back in line and get another one, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> sweet and spicy bacon burger. Come down to Whataburger. It's only here for a limited time. There's a reason why Popeyes creates some of the best tasting chicken in the world. We were born in New Orleans, Louisiana, the land of good fun and great cooking. Spicy flavor is a way of life in New Orleans, and everything we make reflects it. From our Popeyes bona fide chicken and handcrafted tenders, to our home style mashed potatoes with Cajun gravy and our soft buttery biscuits, everything we make is made with care and served up fresh, only at Popeyes. Sweating through another barn burner at your team's bar? Sure am. Wish you had some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in meeting new people. Epic fist bumps, epic forearm bumps, epic or chest bumps, touchdown dancing, break dancing, line dancing, dancing like nobody's watching, awesome refreshment, refreshment for the win, and one-of-a-kind Rocky Mountain cold refreshment. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <sighs> when cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost-brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Falcon Bank and the Laredo Lemurs are a winning combination. At Falcon, they know what counts. Personalized service, attention to detail, and genuine commitment to helping customers achieve their dreams. Falcon Bank, guided by faith, grounded by family, and committed to you. Need a little spark in your life? Then come on out to Unitrade Stadium for Friday Night Fireworks. Tickets start as low as $5, and you'll get to see great baseball and great fireworks all in one night. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS or go online at LaredoLemurs.com. I'll see you at the ballpark. Hey, Lemurs fans, every Thursday night at Unitrade Stadium is a Thirsty Thursday. Come on out and enjoy cold Miller Lite draft beers for only $1. That's right, beer for a buck. You can get tickets online at LaredoLemurs.com or by phone at 956-7-LEMURS. I'll see you at the ballpark. Here we go into the top of the ninth inning. Taking over on the hill for Laredo is Luis De La Cruz. So De La Cruz will face off against Brent Dean, Leo Vargas, and then Jace Ray. So that's who's due up anyway. We'll see if anybody comes off the bench. I doubt it. TJ Middlestead is on the bench, and he's injured right now for the Wichita Wingnuts. So I highly doubt we'll see him. 14-5. to 5, Lemur's in the lead. Here's the pitch to Brent Dean. And it's a strike on the inside corner. De La Cruz starts the day with a record of one win and two losses. He has a six-even ERA. He has pitched in 12 games now for the Laredo Lemurs, this one being the 13th. The ball is in one strike. And the late kick on the throw home is a fastball low. Last time Luis De La Cruz was out was in this series on the 23rd. That was the first game of the series. He pitched an inning and gave up two runs on four hits. So the Lemurs trying to get him right before the couple of days off coming up. The 1-1 pitch. Fastball up and in. Look out. Pegging the Miles per hour up there at 93 miles an hour on the radar gun. That's fast. Two one count. 
The tall right-hander, all six foot six of them, delivers. And a high fastball. So make it three balls and one strike now to Brent Dean. Dean on the day reached on an error. And after that, he's 0 for 2. So officially 0 for 3 is Brent Dean. Three balls and one strike. De La Cruz working out of the stretch. He'll throw home, and that is a strike on the outside corner. Good pitch there. Another fastball. Took a little something off of it, though. Made sure he had the control of it. De La Cruz was a non-drafted free agent at the age of 18 when he was picked up by the Padres. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swan and popped up over to the right side of the infield. That's into foul territory. Geiger's over there. He's going to watch it fall out of play, though. So three balls and two strikes. Yeah, De La Cruz spent nine years in the Padres organization, reaching up to double-A ball in San Antonio with the Missions. In his time with the Padres, he put up a record of 23 wins and 35 losses. He had a 4.46 ERA through 269 games. So Brent Dean ready to go on the 3-2 pitch. Here it comes. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Put Brent Dean in the books. And that's one out. And I believe they're doing some kind of special with Brent Dean for strikeouts and beer. So everybody's a little excited over the strikeout there. And Leo Vargas coming up to the plate. Leo Vargas on the day. He has picked up a base hit. So officially he's one for two. He also walked back in the fourth inning. And De La Cruz will kick and throw home high for a ball. It's funny when the lemurs have put up 19 hits today in 14 runs that the biggest story of the day is what they've done on defense. And that's turning that triple play back in the second inning. One ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Outside for a ball. I mean, it's just such a rarity that that really overhangs everything else that the Lemurs have done today on the offensive side. And there were a few errors to help out on the Wichita Wingnut side. Nonetheless, the Lemurs probably would have put up a lot of runs today. Here's the 2-0. A fastball in there for a strike. That one clips the outside corner. Two balls and one strike now to Leo Vargas. On deck is Jace Ray. He's the leadoff man for Wichita. And the 2-1 in the dirt. Ryan Peterson moves over to his left a little bit to get himself out of the way of that one. So we're approaching the three-hour mark for this ball game. We started at 6.04 p.m. Central Time, and it's currently 9.02. A 3-1 count. So De La Cruz is going to try to work backwards here. Try to come back and get the out. The 3-1 inside, ball four. So Leo Vargas takes his walk. That's his second walk of the night. And that'll bring up the top of the order, Jace Ray. Jace Ray is 0 for 4 in the game. Wichita has put up five runs on nine hits tonight. A left-handed batter, Jace Ray. Jace Ray swinging a black bat tonight. He's got a couple of white batting gloves on. He wears a leg breast leg brace on his lead leg to protect from foul balls. The pitch. A fastball on the outside corner at the belt. No balls and one strike. So De La Cruz getting the sign from the catcher, Peterson. Nobody holding on the runner at first base and the 0-1 is low, backhanded by Peterson. So the Lemurs can get a double play ball and get out of the ball game here and just end it all. We'll see what De La Cruz has up his sleeve right now. One ball and one strike. Here's the pitch. Fastball in. Way inside, in fact. Brian Peterson had to reach across his body to catch that one. The wind is starting to pick up as we move on throughout the night. It's really blowing briskly out to left field. You step outside here at this ballpark. And it feels like you're in a blow dryer. It's so hot and the wind blows so hard. The 2-1. High and inside, three balls and one strike. So De La Cruz trying to gain the control back here. He's gone to some deep counts to all three batters. 
The three one pitch. A fastball, a strike on the inside corner. Jace Ray didn't like that call too much. He thought it was a little bit too far inside. So now a full count. So now Ray's got to be up there protecting. Here's the pitch. Fastball away, ball four. So back to back walks delivered by De La Cruz. And now David Espinoza going to be coming up to the plate. Espinoza on the day. He's got a base hit. He was also hit by a pitch back in the third inning. So officially one for three on the day is Espinoza. And Starling Rodriguez will step into the on-deck circle. 14-5 Laredo. Top of the ninth inning. Lemur's trying to pick up the victory with the win here tonight. They'll go back to where they started in this series. Three games back behind Wichita. The pitch. Fastball in there for a strike on the outside corner. 95 miles an hour for Luis De La Cruz. De La Cruz holds the baseball behind his back as he gets the sign. Now he'll bring his hands together. And he throws the 0-1. Swung on in a pop-up over to the left side. Silverio running for it, but it looks like it's going to get out of play, and it will. It's about eight rows back here at Unitrade Stadium. But it's no balls and two strikes to David Espinoza, so De La Cruz has worked ahead of David Espinoza. He has not done that to the previous three batters. So Espinoza slowly backing in the batter's box with runners at first and second base and one out. Lemur's in control with a 14-5 lead. Here's the pitch. Fastball swung and fouled away. So we'll keep the count at no balls and two strikes. And now the ball boy is going to come out and refresh the home plate umpire with some new baseballs. Some new shiny baseballs for you. So again, no balls and two strikes. Espinoza batting from the left side. He's a switch hitter. He swings here and pops it up over to the left side. That's going to get out of play. Back up onto the concourse here at Unitrade Stadium, and you see it bouncing around. So the count stays at 0 2. Espinoza is the number two hitter in the batting order, by the way. One foot out and one foot in for Espinoza. Now he is fully in the batter's box, ready to go. De La Cruz delivers fastball away one ball and two strikes to Espinoza so De La Cruz extending the top of the ninth inning here he's very deliberate up there on the plate or up there on the mound takes his time and the one two pitch fastball swung on and that's popped up that gets back behind the home plate it might even get up and over the ballpark So one ball and two strikes. Lemurs would like that double play ball to end things. If they can get it. Of course, it's never a guarantee. So one ball and two strikes. Peterson sets up inside. Here's the pitch. It's high for a ball. Another fastball in there with De La Cruz bringing the heat again. 96 miles an hour on that pitch. And the 2-2 delivery. Swung on and missed. A strikeout. And the home plate umpire says Espinosa got a little tiny piece of it to tip it into the glove of the catcher, Peterson. That'll make the second out. And the Lemurs need one more out to get the win and split the series against the Wichita Wingnuts. Not an easy task. Wichita, a good baseball team. Laredo Lemurs, also a good baseball team. So we've had a pretty good battle here between these two clubs so far this year. And the first pitch to Rodriguez spins him out of the way. So one ball, no strikes. Lemurs up by nine. Lemurs in Wichita this year. Wichita leads 
overall with a 6-4, with six wins to the Lemurs four. Here's a pitch, a breaking ball misses inside. The Lemurs looking to even up the series here at home, so if the Lemurs can win, and they're an out away from doing so, they'll be five and six against Wichita on the year, which is pretty good for the Lemurs from what they've done in the past against this club. The 2-0 fastball, a strike on the outside corner, two balls and one strike. Two outs in the top of the ninth. Lamers with 14 runs on 19 hits tonight. The 2-1 pitch, swung on and fouled away. Make it two balls and two strikes. So Wichita is down to their final strike and their final out. De La Cruz, his pants are blowing in the wind. So is his jersey. He delivers. Swung in a liner into left field. Moving back in the ball. Richardson, he'll get underneath it. He'll make the catch. And the Lemurs have won the ball game. They split the series with the Wichita Wingnuts. And they are now three games back in the South Division behind Wichita. And it's going to be a fun one coming down the stretch between these two clubs and the Joplin Blasters in the American Association South Division. They all have a lot of games between each other coming up. And it's going to be interesting to see who ends up winning this South Division. Let's go ahead and take a timeout. Come back with the post-game show. Lemurs win tonight, 14-5. to Thanks for joining us for Laredo Lemurs Baseball, brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashley's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, Trisco Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, Family Chevrolet, Gold's Gym, Get on our communications, HEB, iGadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony Lee, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Place, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, Tamu Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade 40, Water River of Alice. The Laredo Lemurs Post Game Show is coming your way next. All right, go ahead and throw it down to the field to Cameron Sonder and see if we can get some sound from J. Udi Valdez. All right, well, that's enough, I guess. <laughs> they always get him with the uh, bucket shower there. See if Cameron's got anything more to say. No, I guess not. We'll go ahead and go to a break. Sweating through another barn burner at your team's bar? Sure am. Wish you had some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in meeting new people. Epic fist bumps, epic forearm bumps, epic or chest bumps, touchdown dancing, break dancing, line dancing, dancing like nobody's watching, awesome refreshment, refreshment for the win, and one-of-a-kind Rocky Mountain cold refreshment. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <sighs> when cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost-brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Falcon Bank and the Laredo Lemurs are a winning combination. At Falcon, they know what counts. Personalized service, attention to detail, and genuine commitment to helping customers achieve their dreams. Falcon Bank, guided by faith, grounded by family, and committed to you. Need a little spark in your life? Then come on out to Unitrade Stadium for Friday Night Fireworks. Tickets start as low as $5, and you'll get to see great baseball and great fireworks all in one night. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS or go online at LaredoLemurs.com. I'll see you at the ballpark. Hey, Lemurs fans, every Thursday night at Unitrade Stadium is a Thirsty Thursday. Come on out and enjoy cold Miller Lite draft beers for only $1. That's right, beer for a buck. 
You can get tickets online at LaredoLemurs.com or by phone at 956-7-LEMURS. I'll see you at the ballpark. Unitrade continues to provide solutions in foreign trade through a highly satisfactory customs brokerage service. Unitrade has quality trained personnel devoted to the highest level of customer service. For all your transportation, distribution, and consolidation needs, it's Unitrade. Chavarria's Plumbing's the number one choice for any plumbing problem. Chavarria's is a full service company with up to date technology trained professionals. With over 30 years of service to the community, Chavarria's is still growing strong. Visit chavarriasplumbing.com. And go Lemurs! Core Business Solutions is a proud sponsor of Lemurs Baseball. Core Business Solutions services the 17 southernmost counties of Texas as well as areas of northern Mexico. They offer a wide range of high-tech solutions for businesses and organizations. Make Core Business Solutions your solution today. For all of your vehicle collision repair and paint needs, there's only one place to turn. Mike's Paint Place. Mike's Paint Place has computerized color matching and digital imaging. They also do full frame and suspension repairs. Stop by and see Mike's Paint Place today at 6 6410 Polaris Drive in Laredo. Hey fans, every Monday night at Unitrade Stadium is Margarita Monday. Come on out to the ballpark and cool off with an ice cold margarita for only $2. But please do not drink them too fast. You might get a brain freeze. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS. Check us out at LaredoLemurs.com. Tokyo Garden of Laredo is located at 2515 East Del Mar Boulevard and they serve the best sushi in town. Stop by Tokyo Garden for a quick lunch or a fancy dinner. Either way, you're going to enjoy our fine cuisine. Did you just get off work? Then come on by and check out our happy hour specials. Tokyo Garden, where you'll find the best sushi in Laredo. Right now, when you sign up for a Gold's Gym membership, you'll get tons of extras completely free. Confidence, free. Compliments from your coworkers, free. And the desire to wear tiny bathing suits, you guessed it, free. You'll be stronger with extras, and you'll be stronger with Gold's Gym. Know your own strength. Tiny bathing suit not included. Pro Mega Signs of Laredo is there for all of your printing and signage needs. We can be found at 1615 Jackman Road in Laredo, or you can reach us by phone at 956-723-2110. Again, that's 956-723-2110. If you need a sign, big or small, come to Pro Mega Signs of Laredo, where your print job is just around the corner. Breakfast speaks for itself here at Whataburger. It's going to be hot, it's going to be fresh. It's almost like when you're a kid and you wake up in the morning, you can smell mom cooking breakfast. I like their hash browns. My favorite is the honey butter chicken biscuit. I like the taquitos. We have some fresh cracked eggs here. I like these pancakes because they're fluffy. <laughs> I really like the fact that you can get into Whataburger real fast and bring it on the go. We're cooking breakfast for you at Whataburger. In over 40 years, nobody's helped more families achieve the American dream of home ownership than Armadillo. In fact, Armadillo Homes has built more homes than all other builders combined. And there are reasons for this. Integrity, responsibility, service, and of course, quality. So if you're thinking about making the greatest investment in your life, think of the one builder who's dedicated its entire life to helping the Laredo family. Think Armadillo Homes, armadillohomes.com. Go Lemurs. We all know we can accomplish more when we're ready. That's why I've chosen Texas A&M International University. I want a four-year degree and the opportunities that it brings. TAMU has welcomed me and more than 7,000 students from around the world. TAMU empowers me to greatness, ignites my mind, and propels me to my future and my impact. Imagine the possibilities when you're powered by TAMU. Register now for summer and fall. Visit TAMU.edu and get powered. Since Accenting Technologies opened for business in 1998, they have worked to establish solid relationships with their clients. They are set to maintain the highest standards of service and integrity and to perform work of only the highest quality, achieving client satisfaction on every project. They have attained these goals through a tradition of care and professional pride. They serve a wide range of corporations and small business franchises. Extending Technologies has the tools and expertise for any technical need that your business may have. Call us here in Laredo at 725-2654. That's 725-2654 for Ascending Technology. Now it's time for the Laredo Lemurs Post Game Show. Laredo Lemurs Baseball is brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashley's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, Trisco Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, Family Chevrolet, 
Gold's Gym, Guerra Communications, HEB, iGadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony League, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Flakes, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, TAMU Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade 40, Whataburger of Alice. Now here's Bill Harrington with Laredo Lemur's Post Game Show. All right, Lemur's fans, thanks for sticking around for the Post Game Show. Bill Harrington and Cameron Songer here for you. So let's go and wrap this one up quickly. The Lemurs pick up 14 runs on 19 hits. They made three errors tonight. Five runs on nine hits and four errors for the Wichita Wingnuts. Ryan Beckman uh, gets the win tonight for the Laredo Lemurs coming out of the bullpen in relief of Greg Holly. And the game was played in three hours and five minutes here this evening. A couple of the highlights for you. We don't really have a whole lot of time to paint the full picture. We can probably just go full for a full hour if we went ahead and broke everything down for you here in the ball game. But the really exciting play was the triple play back in the second inning when the Wichita Wingnuts were up at the plate. They had runners at first and second base, and Harrison Kane came up to the plate. He had a hard ground ball over to the third baseman, Juan Silverio. Silverio grabbed the ball, touched the bag at third, went over and threw the bag, uh, threw the ball over to second base. Taylor had it. He got the out at second. Taylor threw the Geiger, and Geiger got the out at first base. And that would be a triple play, the first in Lemur's history. Tonight's game was the 361st game for the Laredo Lemurs in their history, and they turn a triple play here. So an exciting play there tonight. That's one that will go down in the record books for sure for the Laredo Lemurs. An exciting game as the game ended up being tied in the fourth inning. It was a 4-4 tie, but the Lemurs really took over in that inning. They ended up scoring six runs on seven hits in the inning. There were a couple of errors made by the Wichita Wingnuts there in that frame as well. The Lemurs would see a home run tonight by Juan Silverio. He would hit a homer. Jayudi Valdez would hit a three-run homer. And everybody would get a hit tonight for the Laredo Lemurs, except for Dustin Geiger. Unfortunately, Geiger ends up going 0 for 4 tonight in this ball game. So a tough one for him. But overall, some good defense tonight for the Laredo Lemurs and a win as they go on and win by a final score of 14 to 5. So the Lemurs are going to have a couple of days off coming up. They will have Monday and Tuesday off. They'll get on the bus. They'll head on up to Joplin and play a three-game series in Joplin starting on Wednesday. So they'll be in Joplin on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. They'll have a day off on Saturday, which is really weird, a Saturday off day. And then the Lemurs will come back, start a three-game series against the Sioux Falls Canaries on Sunday. They'll be in town for those three and then right back out on the road again to face off against Amarillo and Grand Prairie. So some quick turnarounds coming up for the Laredo Lemurs, but the two days off is going to be very, very nice. So with the win tonight for Laredo, they move to 34 and 28 on the season. The Wichita Wingnuts are now 37 and 25 on the year. The Lemurs will be three games back after tonight's action here at the American Association. So that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. For my buddy Cameron Songer, my name is Bill Harrington. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight as the Lemurs win over the Wichita Wingnuts in grand fashion, a 14 to 5 final. Have a good night, everybody, and enjoy your couple of days off. Thanks for joining us for Laredo Lemurs Baseball, brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashley's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, Trisco Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, Family Chevrolet, Gold's Gym, Guerra Communications, HEB, iGadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony League, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Flakes, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, TAMU Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade Boarding, Whataburger of Alice. Join us next time for all your Laredo Lemurs action.